NASCAR is the only sport in the world that starts its season with its biggest event, the Daytona 500. We are live here at the Daytona International Speedway on the red carpet for Media Day. And we are so excited to be here to share some of the anticipation leading up to the 66th running of the Daytona 500. Kevin Conley alongside Danny Harnden. Danny, let's go, my man. Yeah, let's go. We start off the show with the man, Joey Logano. <laughs> this is pretty exciting. Joey, you won this race in 2015. We were talking to, uh, who was it, Michael McDowell this yeah. morning said he had, during victory lane, there was about 15 minutes he blacked out. He can't remember. <laughs> do, do you remember all of your 2015 celebration and all that? I, mean, I do. I do. <laughs> He must have partied a little harder than me or something, <laughs> which I didn't think he was the guy. Yeah, there you go. You know, I really didn't. But, uh, you know, it is such a special thing to win this race. This race is so big for our whole sport. Um, but there's not much better. We're right on the other side of victory lane right now. There's not much better than driving your car into victory lane and seeing your team, your family, your friends, everybody that's here. And there's really not words for people to say besides just yelling in each other's face. It's just, <laughs> like, everyone's just so excited about it because it, it's it's a huge deal to call yourself a Daytona 500 champion. And that moment when you pull in, it's, it's life-changing for so many. For everyone involved, it changes their life. Uh, it's definitely one that everyone wants to have checked off. You know, one of the questions that we were asking some of the guys about uh, winning this race or potentially winning this, dra this race was the stress to lift the trophy because it's heavy. When you get out of the car, they're afraid not to drop it. Oh, I mean, the adrenaline's real. I mean, you lift it. I feel like in the moment, I, I, maybe I'm different than everyone else you've talked to. I feel like I think goes right up. You know? so you're just like, yeah, I don't know. Your, your adrenaline is so so fired up at the moment uh, You know, to lift the Harley J. Roller Trophy. I mean, that's that's the dream, right? That's what everybody dreams of for, for their, their whole life, really. If you're a racer and you're a kid growing up watching this, like you dream of putting that trophy up. And uh, I mean, some of the cool things that come along with it, too. Like, I mean, you, they, they have the big trophy, like the one that stays, the one right behind yeah. you, uh, in your name's on that forever. Like, that that means something, right? You have the one you bring home with you, but that one stays here, has your name on it. That's cool. And they have the concrete out front with your hand, and your, uh, <laughs> which I didn't think was too cool until last year. I brought my kids out there, and they were putting their hands in, like, yeah. in my – a concrete spot, and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. So <laughs> yeah. there's some neat things that come along with it. After you won it in 2015, you had a sixth place finish, another six, a fourth, a fourth, a runner up. That's what it's all about. You just need to have a chance at the end. You've done that. Yeah, I've been. At, I mean, there's been so many times we've been so close, and the the times you didn't bring up, we were leading on the last lap and wrecked. So uh, they, we're just we're. It's been a great race for us, right? We're, we're like so close, but like one win. Nine years ago is like, yeah, <laughs> you know, like uh -huh. I'm about ready for another one at this point. We've been so close, so hopefully uh, we can do it. We were within inches of it last year, so um, hopefully this year we can make the difference you, up. You know, for you, as you m mentioned those things, the, the expectation for level for you and your team at the, the level you guys are at, you expect to win. You anticipate winning not only this race but being in the championship. That has got to be so – rewarding and fulfilling as a driver to know every time you get in you got a chance to win i mean that's what you're you're here to do um yeah i said years ago i'm not here to have fun anymore right if fun was growing up racing with my dad that was great <laughs> but now it's a, it's a job and the expectation to go out there to win is real and not only on yourself but the people who are working on your cars your sponsors your fans it's it's life changing for them too, right? I mean, they're they're looking at their livelihood, saying, "Hey, you better go do your job out there." Uh, <laughs> that's my food on the table too, <laughs> so I got to stick up for that and do that. Um, and and I like that part of it. I'm I'm good with it. Um, but it, it's it's all about having that opportunity to win, like you said. And you know, I've put myself in a, in a great position, a great team around me, great people. Um, that, that puts me in a spot that I can win any race. That's awesome. Joey, thanks for joining us. We uh, really appreciate the time. Two Thank cup you. championships, this would be a great way to start 2024 if you'd grab you, this one. I'd agree with you 100%. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, that's a good call. <laughs> Very good. Joey nice. Logano, driver of the number 22 car for Penske Racing. Truly one of the threats not only to win this race, but to win the championship. He gets it done every single year. Yeah, like, like we mentioned, there's so much skill, but also so much luck to win this race. And after he won it in 2015, you just keep putting yourself mm -hmm. in position to win this race, and things will flow. That's right. Joining us now is uh, Chase Elliott, driver of the number nine car for Hendrick Motorsports. Chase, we appreciate it. As you get your headset on, uh, Kevin, Danny here. Hey. We're uh, along uh, a stream on Next Star Nation. 200 stations across the country. 
Um, we are so excited uh, to, to have the opportunity to ask questions, get your perspective on the upcoming season. Uh, this is a bounce back year for you. Last year was not a great year. You missed some races because of an injury. Um, didn't go to victory lane. Didn't go to the playoffs. <laughs> Um, I know you are ready. <laughs> you are ready. I'm aware to get to get after it. I mean, yeah, I know the I the, the want to is is, is really there. Kind of explain to us sort of your feelings and thoughts heading into this season. Yeah, I'm just you know looking forward to the year. I, I think uh, anytime you have a tough season like that, um, it, it can it can destroy a race team. It, it can destroy any team. You know, any any sports. Uh, team out there that goes through a, a bad year I think it's really easy to for it to be torn apart and typically it happens from the inside out and um, just really really proud of our group for sticking together um, I feel like we're just uh, we're just in a, in a good place from a communication standpoint um, are all of our problems going to disappear overnight no I, I don't necessarily think that that's the case uh, however the will and the desire and the want to to be better and and to fight for one another and to get back uh, to where we feel like we can be and where we've been in the past is as high as it's ever been. And I think anytime you, uh, you know, through the course of our, this will be year nine, um, through the course of our first eight seasons, we've been fortunate to have have some success. Uh, and, and we have faced years like last year. And, and I, I truthfully believe those are, those are the types of things that shape you and they force you to ride the wave uh, and stay in that middle ground zone as, as best you can. What have you learned in your eight starts here at the Daytona 500? You got pretty close in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, finishing runner -up. I know. I wish somebody had <laughs> grabbed whoever presses the caution yes, button. Yes, that was uh, <laughs> hand, you know, for about a second. But, um, yeah, you know, it, it truthfully, it, it's such a hard race um, because there is so much out of your hands. Um, Guys have found a way to have consistent finishes. You know, I look at Ryan and I look at Denny and those guys, you know, that they could have won the last 10, you know, it seems like. Um, and then there's guys like me that have a okay run every now and again and crash the rest of the time. So it's, uh, it, it's a tough one, you know, and, and I think there is some middle ground. I've had seasons where I've been overly aggressive and, and caused some of the wrecks and, and been, um, you know, been pushing too hard too early or whatever it may be. And then I've had years where I've just been in the mindset of just get to the end, you know, just get to the end of this thing, and I've crashed that way too. So there, there is some middle ground in, in the approach. I'm still searching uh, for, you know, for what that is, but I think that uh, anytime you have good pace in your car and you can stay on offense, I think it helps your odds of, of putting yourself in a good position. You know, we have received a lot of questions from our, from our Nexstar affiliates, and one of the questions that was sent to us from our partners is, any driver, past or present, who would you like to race against? Um, you know, I've I've been fortunate, you know, through the course of my career. I got in at a time where, you know, uh, Tony Stewart was in his final year. That was really cool for me. A guy I grew up watching. I uh, got to, you know, race with Jimmy and and um, you know Casey Kane and just a lot of people that I looked up to as a kid. I've right. I've been super fortunate to have a chance to race against and even better be teammates with some of them. Um, so I think that's really cool. I, I wouldn't change it. Uh, yeah. I, I feel very fortunate to have gotten in when I did and, and uh, have been here long enough to kind of see some of those transitions and, and see those guys step away and, and into retirement. And uh, so I, I'm honestly content. I, I feel like I got in at a time where I've seen a lot of new faces, but I've also had a chance to race against guys that I grew up watching and uh, not everybody gets to say that, so I'm right. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, good deal. Chase Elliott, appreciate the yep. time, Thank and good you. luck Very this good. week. Go get him. Enjoy. All right. All right. Thanks, man. We appreciate it a lot. All right, again, Chase Elliott, driver of the number nine car for uh, Hendrick Motorsports. This is the 40th anniversary of Hendrick Motorsports. Um, you know, they got their very first win with Jeffrey Bodine, mm -hmm. uh, you know, back in the day at Martinsville. Uh, but, boy, they are a super powerhouse race team yeah. now. And Chase Elliott, boy, he – He's hungry. You yeah. can tell because last year didn't go well. Didn't mean to kind of start it off on the downer, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but that's that, the but truth. The, but that last question, though, you asked him what driver over history he would like to race against. Why not his dad? I yeah. mean, a guy that won 44 cup races. I mean, yeah. You yeah, know. that was interesting. Yeah, take on dad. Yeah, no, again, <laughs> this uh, this uh, media day has been going on all day long, started at 8 o'clock today. You know, so we've had some drivers already roll through this morning that we had an opportunity to talk to, uh, including. 
the champ, Ryan Blaney. So uh, here's what Ryan had to say as he made his way across the red carpet. Yeah, someone just informed me that I was, this is my 10th Daytona 500, which is making me feel very, very old. But um, it's hard to believe. You know, I remember coming here, as, you know, uh, driving for the Wood Brothers, uh, running a partial schedule that year in 15, um, and just being on a different side of it, right? Because I grew up here, coming here watching my dad race, but now I actually got to be a part of the race and um, just a huge appreciation for it and trying to take it all in, you know? And I feel like you spend the first two or three years taking all of this in of the 500 and uh, and the race itself. And then once you kind of have done it nine times, like you just, you, you look at it a little bit different way. Um, so yeah, it's it's, uh, it's hard to believe it's been 10 years ago since I first made my initial 500 start, but uh, 0 for 9 so far. Hopefully we can be 1 for 10. That'd be nice. I think the biggest thing is when you walk into a room or you have an engagement, you know, when they announce your name, it always ties to Daytona 500 champion. So that, that always gets said wherever you go, and that's pretty pretty cool. But being known as a Daytona 500 champion, that's not something that will ever get old. Um, you know, I think it's a very exclusive club. It, and I don't mean club, but it's a very um, high accomplishment, and it's something that we all – all of us, everybody here, is got high on their priority list, and so it never gets old. Yeah, it's um, it's special. It it means a lot to myself and my family and the team. Um, and so yeah, it's it's a week where we take it all in and enjoy it. Certainly is neat to hear yeah. from those drivers mm -hmm. and what it means to be here at Daytona and to win and go to Victory Lane here at the Daytona International Speedway in the Daytona 500. Yeah, Kyle Larson joins us right now to chat a little bit. And Kyle, um, what do you think about this race coming up on Sunday? Um, you've qualified well, right, <laughs> a couple of times. Um, talk about getting through this race and ending up in victory lane right outside these doors. Yeah, you know, it, uh, it'd be nice to, to end up there. Um, this, this year, I think, you know, on paper we look really bad, but uh, we're, we're not as bad as we come across um so <laughs> yeah i think you just continue doing what we've been doing and and you know, hopefully things will work out a little differently in in the results and uh we can finally get that win all uh, right you've got hendrick uh, cars.com on your hat you had hendrick motorsports 40th anniversary of hendrick motorsports this year um the most successful organization in nascar history what does it mean to you to be a part of that and try to create your own history in a, at an organization that has been so strong. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's an honor um, first and foremost to be um, at Hendrick Motorsports, but to be a part of a historic, you know, monumental season um, with the 40th year, it, uh, it it brings its pressure, you know, because you wanna you do a good job um, in this important season. So, yeah, it's been good. You know, in the past, yeah, you know, I think they said I've won like 17 races um, since joining Hendrick just a few years ago. A uh, couple also race wins, um, championships. So um, you know, it's nice to to feel like you know I, I've had a, a decent spot in in all the history that he's in all the success that he's had as a team owner. But um, there's still a lot more that we want to accomplish and and all of that. So hopefully this is a successful year for all four of us, and um, we can we can you know bring a lot of of wins and memories to the to the team. Speaking of wins, he had four wins last year. Uh, the 2021 Cup champion, what's it going to take to get back to that? Last year, finished runner-up. I mean, you were right there. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we were, I don't know, 15 laps away from, from getting another one. You know, our team did a, a great job executing at Phoenix. We just didn't uh, quite have the speed that Blaney did, and um, you know, he did a great job. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when you come up one spot short like that, it's, uh, it, it, it stinks. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, it just uh, gives you a lot of motiv motivation throughout the offseason to, to improve on, on areas that you, you you know that you need to improve on, and, and hopefully that will translate to success on the racetrack. Uh, t today's Valentine's Day. It's a work day for you. Um, we've got a couple of questions, r you know, related to Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh, the third voice on our team is J.B. Buno. J.B., fire off some of those oddball yeah, questions let's have some fun yeah. it's media day the daytona 500 this sunday we hope of course kyle of course happy valentine's day to you we're gonna we're gonna ask you a series of questions here for valentine's day you ready let's see if i can get them right let's say that caution goes on for a little longer than you'd like what's the one snack you would love to have under caution right there with you in the car oh 
Uh, I mean, we do carry snacks. <laughs> so so what, what's your go-to snack? What's your, um, the snack you love? I just have, I think we have like a little Cliff Bar or something in my car. And maybe some, li- and then we have some uh, like energy gummies. Those okay. long races, but okay. you have to drink some fluid with it. But do you like them? Or are they? T- are I like they tasty? the gummies. I like the gummies a lot. But okay. uh, if you eat too many without you know drinking fluid with it, it gives it gave me like a headache, stomach ache. So <laughs> yeah, gotta be to gotta be careful. <laughs> All right, how about this one? All right, uh, you could add any race you want to the NASCAR circuit, uh, any race in the world. You could pick a location, a destination to build a, a NASCAR track. I'm giving you a trillion dollars to build a, the track of your dreams. Where are you going to build it? <laughs> Billion. I think it's gonna be. It's gonna take more than. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, I don't know. Um, overseas somewhere. Uh, I mean, if we could race somewhere like you know, in Europe, like build, replicate like Homestead or Bristol maybe, and go to somewhere in Europe would be pretty awesome. About around Stonehenge or something cool like that. Would yeah. that be cool? I mean, I've never been to Europe, but I assume it's, <laughs> I assume it's nice. I've heard, I've heard it's nice. NASCAR in Europe sounds good to me. All right, last one. We know, obviously, with Taylor Swift, the impact that she has had with the Kansas City Chiefs, who just won the Super Bowl, and, of course, with the NFL. If there's any celebrity, you could pick any celebrity in the world to have on your team for race day. You can you can have your pick. They're there with you, wearing a headset in your ear for the Daytona 500. Who is it? Hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't follow celebrities that well. <laughs> Rock stars, favorite actors. Uh, Got to be somebody you look up to that you'd love to have with you. Gosh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like celebrities that much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like the limelight. So we'll we'll keep it as it is. Well, I hear, oh, I hear Dwayne The Rock Johnson is going to be here on, on oh, Sunday. Yeah. So uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe he finds his way over to Kyle Larson's area. He's, a, he's a big dude. He might have trouble climbing in a car. Yeah. The Rock is <laughs> big. He, mine. he definitely won't fit in my car. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, very good. Kyle, we appreciate the time. Best of luck to you this season. Yep. All right, thank you, Kyle. All right, very good. Kyle Larson, driver of the number five car for Hendrick Motorsports. And very much like the guys we've already talked to today, Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, threats to win – Every single race and a threat to win the championship. Yeah, we talked uh, about this earlier this week about the last three winners. I mean, kind of surprised a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Uh, McDowell and Sendrick and Stenhouse last year. And maybe this will be a big name, a big, big name that pulls it out this year. Yeah, I mean, Denny Hamlin, of course, he's got three Daytona 500 victories but he doesn't have a championship, yeah. you know, and he has not shied away from that fact that that is something that he desperately wants on his resume. So it'll be interesting to, when we get an opportunity to talk with Denny Hamlin in just a little bit and get his thoughts about this upcoming season and in particular um, chasing that championship, that elusive championship for him. Yeah, it was interesting. A lot, a lot of times, especially with Kyle or whoever you talk to and you're like, yeah, this happened last year, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it was yeah. rough, but we're going to turn this around. It's Chase, too. He's, he, that, that team wants to turn it around this year. It was yeah. rough last year. Yeah, one of the things that I've, I've learned over the years about different athletes, NASCAR drivers, they usually have great memories, yeah. okay? And the things that stick with them, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more than the victories, are the disappointments. The ones that yeah. just got away are the ones that, uh, that, that stick with them and the ones that they truly – like to talk about again we're here on the red carpet at media day here at the daytona international speedway we've had an opportunity to talk with a few drivers and once they get done with us they go and answer questions from other media members um you know talking about the daytona 500 and talking about um the upcoming 2024 season and i'd like to just jump in here for a second and say that i'm going to be uh, asking you guys some questions over the course of the stream too maybe some wait a minute that, I wasn't, don't know a, if you that wasn't a part of the script that's live streaming <laughs> man we just we just figure it <laughs> out as we go <laughs> we're just going to ad lib it and figure it out and and that's how you get the most raw genuine yeah. answers from people maybe i'll pick you guys for a driver to look out for but i'm gonna i'm gonna start with this we'll start with this uh, we're, we're the Valentine's Day theme, right? If, if there was a sna- if you were in a race and you were, let's start with the snack question. You guys could have any any snack under caution while you're driving there, uh, you know, in circles waiting for the race to resume. What would it be? All right, it is Valentine's Day, which is like the biggest holiday for chocolate. I gotta have some. It's chocolate, got chocolate, yeah. Right? And yeah. my go-to would be one of two things: Reese's peanut butter cups or a Heath bar. A 
A Heath bar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's, that's kind of my go-to. I thought you were going to say peanut M&Ms because where are they? They We had a big <laughs> bowl in the Peach. kitchen, and they're, like, almost gone. Time out, Tiny. Time okay, out. Okay, I've, yeah. I've had 20 or 30 or whatever, yeah. but that would be mine. Okay. I like the peanut M&Ms, and then I like a, a handful of almonds, too, and just – all at once. I love okay. that, I love that combo. Go. Okay. Uh, I like all right. it. Okay. That's pretty good. JV, what's your go It's going to be a, some kind of a sour candy because I love things that are sour. All things yeah. sour. All right. uh, that's that's my go-to. Yes. All right. We have a new Very guest. Good. All right. We've got, we've got the champ. Champ. Ricky Stenhouse, Jr. We were just we talking, were about, talking candy. about candy. I heard sour and now. Okay. okay. All, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. all right. So we'll, we'll start. <laughs> we'll start with this question. Um, under caution – Extended caution, is there a go-to food or candy that you would want to have in the car to eat? Oh, uh, Reese's for sure. Yeah, all right. Okay, okay so, that's me. So why? Me. why? Why Reese's? Good, dude, they're just so good. <laughs> yeah. just I, love peanut just I love peanut butter. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Peanut, it's I love perfect. peanut butter. And so, yeah, and I like them room temp. So, I mean, in the car, a little heated probably wouldn't be too bad. Oh, you don't okay. take a bite. It's just all in, right? It's just, yeah, no, uh, I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, They're bite the size. times I've ate in the car, you know, like, um, you know, just throughout the years, it is very difficult. Yeah. Um, there was a race that, you know, was rain delayed, and I didn't have time to eat dinner. Like, it was like, oh, hey, track's, track's dry, let's go. Um, I had my guys hand me, like, a protein bar, and, uh. like, I'm trying to break it off. And, like, <laughs> put, it the, yeah. put it in my helmet. Did you get crumbs it's, on that? Yeah. Uh, it was all over the place. Man. It was all over the place. Full, I felt like, full face helmets make yeah, it a little bit like of a I challenge. Yeah, I felt like a, you know, a kid in a car seat or something. Uh, <laughs> Food everywhere. Yeah. But, all right, very good. All right, let's, let, let's go back to last season. Uh, Victory Lane is right behind us. You won the Daytona 500. What what was that like? Th- take us through the emotions and the feelings that you had winning that race. Yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, just over the top, really. I mean, it's the biggest race of the season. I'd been trying to win it since 2012. Uh, you get one shot a year at, at, at getting it done. And, um, you know, I, I've won at Daytona before. I've pulled into this victory lane. So I knew what to expect there. But, you know, I think, you know, you don't realize how big it is. And, and, and not really how big just – that moment is but like how far it stretches you know when you're done and and throughout that whole next week and you know being able to promote this race promote all your partners and and in nascar for for that you know period of time it was it was really special and now uh you know coming back trying to defend is um is is something that i'm i'm looking forward to as far as Vegas odds go, you weren't one of the favorites last year. Um, no. Neither was Michael McDowell. Neither was Austin Sendrick. Why do you think that's a little trend going these days? I don't know why the trend is that who, who has won uh, lately. But, you know, I think it's uh, super speedway racing definitely lends its hand to getting to the end of the race no matter what. Um, you know, and so, you know, some of, sometimes a lot of the faster cars aren't around at the end, um, you know. But that's part of it. I, I've I've had some of the fastest cars here. Uh, twenty twenty, we sat on the pole and felt like we had a, a great race car, and uh, you don't make it to the end. Uh, and and that's that's the key uh, to this type of racing. I think you know, on average, fifteen cars finish on the lead lap at the end of this race. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so. It's about attrition. It's about you know surviving to the end. And uh, but yeah, I, I'm not sure why uh, you know the the guys that were high odds to win have, have won lately. Um, last year, after you won, uh, the viral clip of you going into the Waffle House oh, yeah. with the trophy. I cannot believe it didn't lead to a Waffle House sponsorship <laughs> in some capacity. I didn't, ha- I didn't have anybody reach out. I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure. Hopefully, they buy all their. Uh, their their supplies from Kroger uh, in 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 the in the back back there, but um, yeah, I've always been a big fan of of Waffle House from my times at uh, you know sprint car racing and dirt racing and you know late night eating yeah. after the car wash and after the dirt races at <laughs> night. Your your options were limited either there or Taco Bell. So uh, big fan of, of of the Waffle House. Waffle House and Reese's. I hope you're listening. Yeah, you're right, watching yeah. somewhere. Right. There's got, an opportunity. Normally I have. What do you got going on there? 
I don't know. I had Reese's on my suit last yeah. year, which was yeah. <laughs> really cool. You got the ice cream, the drumstick oh, ice yeah, cream bars. Oh, yeah, I got bars. drumsticks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah those are yeah. good, too. Uh, yeah. I mean, you look at my suit. It, it's pretty much a full grocery store. I mean, really anything <laughs> yeah. that you need, we got. Yeah. Just throw it in the cart. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. How Let's go. Do you practice rattling off all of the sponsors you know what I mean? Well, you luckily, uh, you know, for us and, and the way our program works is, um, you know, we obviously Kroger is kind of the, the, the footprint. And then, you know, we got a lot of our Kroger racing partners that kind of fill the gaps and, um, you know, pick each race. So I don't have to rattle every single <laughs> one of them off. Um, you know, like this weekend, we got our, um, you know, Boost by Kroger Plus Cottonelle Camaro uh, is what oh, we're going to try yeah, to defend. There you go. With. Wow. And so, uh, paint scheme's really similar to last year. The hood looks a little bit different. Uh, we added a little, um, I'm just going to call it pink. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, fuchsia, maybe? Fu- it is called fuchsia. Oh. So, oh. You nailed that. I have um, no idea where that came from. He's got a lot of fuchsia golf shirts, color, I like, think. You must have colored a lot <laughs> when you were a kid. Like, those big... But outside and you the had lines, the big boxes. You had the big outs, boxes. Outside the lines, yeah. not inside the yeah. lines. Very good. So you've won a Daytona 500. You've won a summer race here. You won Talladega. When you get into a super speedway race, you feel all right. I feel go. confident. Yeah, I feel confident. I, um, you know, I, I, I enjoy the draft. I enjoy, you know, the pushing and the blocking and, you know, the side drafting and, you know, the little nuances of, you know, what I feel like, you can only learn when you get out there. I mean, you can watch tape uh, and learn a few things, but there's a lot of stuff that you feel. And, you know, I feel like for me, I, I, I didn't like it for the longest time uh, when I was in the Nationwide Series. I didn't – and I think it's just because I, I, I hadn't learned enough about it. And, you know, so I would say 2012, um, you know, that kind of time period I feel like in the, the Nationwide Series is – when I started to feel like I've learned enough mm-hmm. about it to, you know, to be good at it or, you know, to be, you know, on the offensive side. I felt like forever I was yeah. on the defense, you know, just trying to stay towards the front, blocking here, blocking there. But, like, I didn't really ever feel like I was aggressive and, and on the offense. And, you know, the more I've learned, the the more offensive uh, <laughs> driver yeah. I've, I've become. Yeah, that is awesome. Ricky, before we get you out of here, because you got your next stop, we want to ask you the final two Valentine's Day questions. <laughs> Dream place you could build a NASCAR track anywhere in the world and race. Where would it be? Mm. Um, I'm going to go with Cabo, Mexico, because I was just there. Wow. And I, didn't, yeah. I was there. I, I came back from there on Monday, mm-hmm. and I was kind of tough to you know come – Come here and start working. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would that would be a party. I'd pick an island. They got I'd great. They got great golf um, yeah. and great weather. Yeah. So yeah. and then golf la- game's good. Golf, golf game's, game's good? average, <laughs> solid. And then the last one, we got to get. We'll get you out of here on this. We know of the Taylor Swift effect on the NFL. You could have any celebrity on your team wearing a headset this weekend for the Daytona 500. You can pick any celebrity on the, in the world. Who would it be? Um. Oh, I don't know. Man, we're, we're really stumping that yeah. with, uh, with the celebrity yeah. question. Yeah, I it's hard to pick. To try and get that same, uh, let's go Justin Bieber. All, All right. right. Okay. Hit, fan of his music? Hit, hit, do I? Fan, fan of his fan? music? Oh, no, I'm 90s country all the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's far from 90s country. <laughs> um, but he is super talented. I, I, yeah. uh, I definitely appreciate uh, what he's capable of doing. And, um you know, I, I'm always a fan when they just grab the guitar and start singing, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. and then that's when you realize, you know, like, dang, they're really good. Yeah. 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 Very good. <laughs> awesome. You know what? You're really good as a race car oh, driver. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank All you. Right. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Ricky thank Stenhouse you. Jr., the defending champion of the Daytona 500, and, boy, it really was a great celebration last yeah. year after he went into victory lane. Waffle I loved House. It. Yep. That's so cool. I absolutely <laughs> love the theory of the Waffle House. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he mentioned golf. He's he's a pretty good yeah. golfer. I had an opportunity, this is years ago, to play in a Pro-Am golf tournament uh, in the Hickory, North Carolina area with him. He was our, our celebrity, and he can hit it. Was he long off the tee? Yeah, he, he was. Yeah. yeah, he was. Wow. Lefty. He's okay. a lefty, yeah. Yeah, he was really he was really good. Again, folks, we are here at the media day for the Daytona 500 at the Daytona International Speedway. We're right at the end of the red carpet. Um, drivers that have their opportunity to talk to the different media members across the country. They'll come sit down with us and uh, chit-chat a little bit 
about the Daytona 500 and, of course, the upcoming season, uh, the 2024 NASCAR season. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really big year for NASCAR. They've, yeah. they've had a few years now mm -hmm. with the new next-gen car. They've certainly figured out a lot of things. Uh, the competition has been outstanding. Um, you know, if you look at the last eight super speedway races, which are Daytona and Talladega, there's been eight different winners. So the, uh, you know, the fact that there's so much unknown here mm -hmm. um, at a place like Daytona, I think that adds to the intrigue. Yeah, when people, any of the drivers, when they walk in this place, they think they, they got a chance to win just because mm -hmm. of what's, especially what's happened the last three years with yeah. some long shots winning this thing. So. Mm -hmm. Hello Hi, there. Carson Hosovar is here with us. Uh, one of the three drivers battling for Rookie of the Year this year. Um, we appreciate you uh, stopping by, having a little bit of time with us. So what's it like being a NASCAR rookie at your first media day for the Daytona 500? Man, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty big. It, it's, it's surreal. I mean, it was just I, – I don't – I got asked the question, what's going to be like to, to race in the Daytona 500? And, and I don't know if it's sunk in yet or if I'm so excited, I'm not nervous or anything. But, um, man, it was just a big deal to, for me to just walk in here and look over to the garage. I've, I've been in the last two or three years, see that empty, walk into the garage that I've had a hard time sneaking into in the past. <laughs> and, uh, you know, seeing the garage stall with my name, face, race car, and, and, and walking into the hauler with guys I'm going to go to war with for 38 weeks. Um, you know, it's just super special just just that little thing for me is um what what makes me so excited to to take on this battle and, and journey yeah a couple of weeks ago you had a big birthday 21 right yep, was yep. It, is that a big deal to you and, and what'd you do ah uh, I, I, I to be honest i had probably the most boringest <laughs> 21st birthday i i didn't even I didn't even really celebrate i was like man i was just gonna be perfect i'm gonna wait i'm gonna watch the lions kick ass i'm gonna watch them uh. win and they they lost. I had some buddies over. I was like, "All right, y'all can let yourselves out. I'm going to bed." <laughs> yeah. How I, heart, how heartbreaking was that Lions loss? Because you people from Michigan, you've been waiting a long time. I finally cared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I finally was invested. I, I I haven't watched. I was like the so I've only watched a few games this year. I only watched like two or three. Um, just just paying attention, right? You know, obviously busy and everything. But I was like, man, I'm gonna sit down and watch. And me and my dad watched earlier, and they lost um, to the Cowboys a few weeks earlier or, or whoever. And it was when they didn't pick the guy, and, and he threw it. I don't know yeah. all the deal. <laughs> but he, and we lost by the sword of, of Dan Campbell, but I'm like, man, we're going to win the next ones. Yeah. And then I finally tuned in again, and they lost. I'm like, I'm done watching. Uh, <laughs> you're bad <laughs> every, luck, huh? Every time I watch, we, we lose. We, uh, we live and die by the sword of Dan Campbell. Obviously, uh, they did. They did a lot of great work. Yeah, but it well, Carson, maybe you could watch the Chiefs a little bit and have a little bit of an effect on All the right, Chiefs. You, you, you back you know. it down over there. You're, you're on the other side of the table for a reason, I can tell. <laughs> All right. You, explain to us the moment when you got the call that you were going to be in this ride for Spire Motorsports in the Cup Series. What was that like? Uh, it was pretty special. Um, you know, I, I remember the call I got for, for Gateway alone. Um, just to run that, run that one race, and um, it didn't feel real. And I remember I, I, I got a call, and they were like, this might happen. And I'm like, all right. Well, they're like, oh, we'll call you in a few hours. I'm like, all right, well, now I'm the most nervous guy. Like, I'm like, I'm going to need to pull over. I'm driving right now. I need to relax. <laughs> I remember I was in a meeting at, at Nice with our truck team, and, and we're focused on that, obviously. And uh, all of a sudden, my phone started buzzing. I'm like, Man, I don't, I, I don't, I want to take this call. Like, I want to walk out, but also too, like, I'm like, I'm balancing. Like, I want to, like, this is the team I'm racing for a championship for, but this is calling. Like, if I don't answer it, like, are they gonna give away the seat? Like, what, what's, what's gonna happen? But, um, uh, man, I, we did that race, and uh, you know, I've never walked out of the infield care center and got so many high fives and smiles and head nods from team owners and and, and, and team personnel and. Um, I remember walking down the line, obviously team owners, they normally, you know, want their alone space and they're up on top of the haulers. And, uh, when I was walking back, I remember just looking up and I got about every head nod you could get mm -hmm. of, um, and, and that was, um, uh, you know, a special moment that I hope to remember visually for a long, long time. Yeah. Is it official? You're six, four, right? Yeah. Are you the tallest cup driver and is it tougher for you to get in and out? Uh, sometimes a little bit, <laughs> um, 
I, I, pr- I promise you, whether it's either on fire or we're winning, I'm going to find a way to get out of it. Um, so that that's no worries, no problem. I, I mean, I was able to get in and out of a race car with one and a half legs uh, <laughs> not right. too long ago. So, um, no, I enjoy it. I'm, I'm maybe an interior guy's nightmare, but not. You know, it's 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 going to stay the same. You know, they might have to build some custom parts, but yeah. I hopefully I'm not. I'm done growing, and I'm sure sure not going to shrink any often. So it's <laughs> it's not going to change anytime soon. One of the things that uh, you know. As you look towards a new season, realistic goals and expectations for you and this team, what are they? Uh, I don't I think we think we have like specific goals of, you know, we're going to make the playoffs or we're going to win a race or we're going to get this many top fives or top tens. You know, you know, obviously, I think Ricky, the year is a, a big one for us, but I think it's just, you know, doing the processes, right? So, you know, mm-hmm. nobody really remembers, um, you know, the three bad years of Dan Campbell. You know, everybody's going to remember this one. And, mm-hmm. Um, you know, for the movie that if they won the Super Bowl, the movie would be, oh, you know, he came into the spot, they had some hardship before him, and then they came on and won the Super Bowl. You know, it was, you know, they're not going to talk about in the movie the three, you know, rough years and him getting laughed at and, and, and you know, potentially getting fired and, and just all this stuff and, and them staying true to their process. And I think that's what is going to be big for us. And, and that was, you know, that was that was our team prep. You know, I'm, I'm just saying what our – Jeff Dickerson at Spire said in, in, in our team meeting just before we headed down here is, um, you know, we just got to remember in our processes and, you know, when we do run top five or top 10 or top 15, where this car was last year, where this car was the year before and years before that, you know, we need to recognize the, the little victories and be able to celebrate those. But no, that's just a step to where we want to get to. Yeah, you uh, mentioned earlier, 21 years old. It seems like you're just enjoying this ride so far you got a long career ahead of you but media day talking about your sponsors just you're just soaking it all up you're with a smile on your face you're not faking it i know that you're just loving life right now i'm just in, enjoying it um you know i had the the naive confidence before i jumped in a cup car <laughs> that i could go faster than <laughs> a, a, a lot of them and 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 that's not you know arrogance or, or anything you know i was able to do a lot of sim work and i'm like man like there's a lot of times where i'm that's this guy in here a lot faster than the real Sunday guys that drive this car that I'm, I'm working on for them. Um, you know, I feel like I understand this car. I feel like I could do a pretty good job. Um, and, and I watched an interview with Tom Brady, and it really stuck in. You know, he had the same sort of mindset, right? You know, Mr. Irrelevant, um, you know, fourth or fifth string quarterback, and he sits on the sideline watches the starter quarterback throw, and he said, oh, man, I could throw better than that. <laughs> um, you know, it's just that naive confidence of, of knowing the preparation, knowing how hard we'll work, and – um, you know, I'm not, I might not be the smartest race car driver and, and, and might not have the best of race craft and, and, and you know, put me in a winning type scenario. I'm not going to win it every single time. Right. That all that stuff comes with experience and, and, and you know, you, you learn by trial a lot of times. But, um, you know, I think raw speed is, is tough to tough to learn. And that comes and builds out over a long time. And that's what I've really focused on trying to do and trying to achieve. And. That's the only thing I, I've ever been scared of getting in a cup car is just I'm, I was scared to be slow, um, <laughs> not scared of making mistakes or crashing or put myself in bad spots. It's just uh, I'm scared to get in a race car and have my guys not confident, not confident in myself that we can make this thing go faster, make it faster than it is in the moment. All right, very good. Carson Hosovar, we appreciate the time. Best of luck this season. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Right, good luck to you. Very good, very good. Again, I think this Rookie of the Year battle, Danny, is going to be yeah. really, really good this year because all of the rookies are in very, very good cars this season. Yeah. Again, I just love his joy. He just loves NASCAR. He loves racing. He loves position. He's in 21 years old. Yeah. It's, it's amazing yeah. how talented he is already. Yeah, NASCAR, um, you know, a few years ago, NASCAR went young. <laughs> um, and he's certainly riding that wave. Yeah. Uh, he's at Spire Motorsports. That's one of the teams that is uh, sort of growing, um, you know, with Corey LaJoy as the main driver and then now C- Carson Hosovar um, joining that team. So potentially, you know, they, they've got a lot of good things going on. They mm-hmm. moved into a brand-new shop. They bought the old Kyle Busch Motorsports shop. Um, so, you know, maybe some things with uh, – with Spire Motorsports and Carson Hosebar and Corey LaJoy, it could it could be, uh, you know, we talked about those surprise winners. Yeah. They certainly could be one of those surprise winners. Yeah, and everybody, you know, Kevin, it doesn't matter what sport you're talking about, spring training and baseball or start of, uh, you know, football camp or whatever. 
at the beginning of the NASCAR season, everyone thinks mm -hmm. our year, yeah. it, whether it's for this race or for the cup yeah. championship. It just uh, so many guys are like, this is it, new start. They got a couple weeks off. That off season is only like this, yeah. but it, it goes quick. But uh, they're thinking this could be it. Yeah, one of the things I uh, enjoyed hearing him talk about and reference quite a bit, the Detroit Lions mm -hmm. and the story behind Dan Campbell, who is the head coach of the Lions. He, uh, he trusted his process for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, they had a few really, really lean years. But this year the Lions were really, really good. And I think uh, Carson's kind of latched on to that. Yeah that fact and that theory yeah. uh, for the upcoming season. Yeah. You see when Ricky Stenhouse was celebrating victory lane, you got to be thinking, what was he thinking? Like, I can't believe I'm raising this trophy. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe it happened. Yeah, that trophy, by the way, uh, is right there behind us, you guys. It's um, it's here. It's, it's always on the media day red carpet, and uh, it's always – I always get goosebumps seeing it. It is yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah. I was doing yeah. a little research today. The one behind us is over 100 pounds. The one they – right there, it's 100 pounds. It's four feet tall, five feet wide. I mean, it's a big thing. But the, Oh, so that's not the trophy that no, they're – They give them a replica right, 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 right. one. Drivers however, get a replica. Yeah, but however, that one is still 54 pounds. I mean, that's – and a lot of the guys said, oh, adrenaline, you just – you just raise it above your head, yeah, right? Yeah, 50, right. 50 pounds, what's that, right? Yeah. No, the, uh, <laughs> we will get to the watermelon. We will get to the watermelons. Yeah. But that's the, the weight of the trophy that you will lift in victory lane if you win the Daytona 500. Not by myself, I won't. 54, you can't, pounds? 54 pounds? You can do 54. Oh, more. Putting that over my head, I'll drop that thing. <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't Some of the skinny winners said they just had adrenaline <laughs> flowing. They were able to do it. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. 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 Ross Chastain, driver of <laughs> the number one car for Trackhouse Racing, joining us. Uh, boy, I, I, I know you're, you're, a, you're a racer to your core. And every time you get in a car, you relish the opportunity. You relish the opportunity to race in the Daytona 500 with a team and a, in a car that has a chance to win. Absolutely. Uh, I went down to New Smyrna last night just to watch the big the, the super late model race and that was the goal for me over 10 years ago was just to get to, like, a super late model and get to where I could win in that. Um, so to be at the big track and racing, it's just – it's still – it doesn't – sometimes it doesn't seem real, and I'm okay to admit it. I'm okay to say it's a – I'm a bit uncomfortable, um, you know, and, and uh, I'm learning it as I go. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I just want to race, so. Racing in the Daytona 500, is, these guys have been dreaming about it all their life, but you're a Florida guy. Was it even – a bigger, bigger deal to you? I actually didn't dream about racing in it because I just was a casual race fan. We did come over to the summer races, July 4th weekend. I didn't, I didn't have, like, I remember sitting in the stands and cheering for the 24 car. I was a Gordon fan. Mm. But I wasn't like, I want to, I'm going to drive. Like, I didn't sit there. Like, a lot of people I hear, you know, they knew from an early age, I know I'm going to do that. I was going to be a watermelon farmer. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I was going to do. And then once I started racing it, I was 12 years old. That's where the, the light turned on. And I was, at 12, I was like, oh, no, I want to be a race car driver. I want to beat the guys that I've watched. I want to mm -hmm. race against them and beat them. I'm better. I had no idea what I was doing. I <laughs> could barely put the automatic transmission into the right gear when I pulled on the track. So, um, yeah, it's uh, the, the times growing up before I was you know, 11 years old and younger were just – casual race fan, and then at 12, it, it turned to driver. Gotcha. Uh, you mentioned a couple times that being a watermelon farmer, you have incorporated the family business, the watermelon, into your uh, victory celebrations. The feedback, the reaction, what, what, what do you get and what do you hear from fans about your celebration? It's unique. It's, it's wild. Yeah, it, and it is. It, it's, not, it's not an accident that – early days of my career were funded by the watermelon industry and different companies involved. Um, but now that we're winning, uh, when I am out there celebrating, there's, there's cheers. There's definite cheers when we win, but a few boos. Oh, I, you know, I'm going <laughs> to act like there's not. <laughs> boos but, aren't bad. But when I lift that watermelon up and the most uh, apparent one was Talladega, uh, two years ago. I got on top of the car, and I had been out of the car already, uh, came out the roof, and I had my helmet on, and then they, uh, Roy, Mr. Roy, our, tr our truck driver, ran the watermelon down. And when I stood up on top of the car, and I I was, like, very aware because I had calmed down enough where I could actually breathe, unlike right after the race. It was a couple minutes later. And when I lifted it up, I felt like this 
it, percussive like impact of like no and it's the noise of the cheers and then i look around and i'm holding it up and then when i smashed it 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 like it went down a little bit in the time i was looking around and then when it hit the ground it, it hit me again like it was like physical i could feel it um <laughs> with my helmet on so wild uh the reaction uh, that i get <laughs> you mentioned you hear cheers you hear booze when you interact interact with fans why the people that are your fans, why are they Ross Chastain fans? What do you hear from them? What do they like about you and the way you present yourself and the way you drive a race car? I mean, there's a lot of a lot of things. Um, I mean, look, some kids are just fan of the one car, no matter who's in it. So I, that's <laughs> that's a cool thing that I'm driving the one as a, and as a kid, that's easy to root for. Mm-hmm. And then after that, um, yeah, I mean, some like the the noise that comes with me of of racing and. It, other drivers get aggravated. Um, some just like it for the watermelon. Like, they they just want to see the watermelon smash. They really don't care that I won, just <laughs> that I'm the guy that's going to smash the watermelon. Um, yeah, but I think a lot of them just like the, the racing side. You've basically been at Trackhouse Racing from the beginning, the, gr- the ground up. Um, explain to us sort of the growth of this team and, and how cool it is to be a part of something from the ground floor. Yeah, when when Justin first told me about Trackhouse, there was n- there was nothing. There wasn't a race car hauler, nothing, bolt, engine, anything. And they did it one year of, as a satellite team of uh, RCR. And then when they purchased Chip Ganassi Racing, which was the team I was driving for, um, that's where the foundation was was CGR. And then the two cars, the at the time the one in forty two, now the one in ninety nine. Um, the, the foundation that was built there, you're right, we were a part of that because a lot of the men and women at Trackhouse were at Chip Ganassi Racing, which is where I was also, and they brought a lot of us over, and they kept the 42 car of 2021 together, and we got to be the one car, and we got to grow together. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm i proud of it. I'm proud to see new faces, though. I, I want I want fresh people that are hungry, and, and Justin's done that. He's hired more people. We've got more employees now than we've ever had, and um, – Keep growing. They keep investing in the people. Yeah. Let's bring JB Buno back on here. Yeah, Austin. guys. Uh, let's. What is uh, well, today? What well, is today? Oh, yeah. love is in the air, Ross. Yeah. Love is in the air. You love watermelons, right? Well, we love asking questions. Fun questions for for our audience. And in the spirit of of Valentine's Day, what is the number one snack you would love to eat under an extended caution on the Daytona International Speedway? Yeah, I uh, I do take snacks sometimes. I'll be honest, not watermelon. Wouldn't be very good, hot. You know, <laughs> would, it wouldn't be. But good. any now, any snack doesn't have to be the yep. you know the the gummies, the fiber right. gummies that keep you fit. Anything. It's it, it's um. I gotta be honest. I get excited about a Cliff Bar, uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. partly uh-huh. because I know that I can take it in there because they don't melt. They're the one like protein bar. Um, but yeah, any I would prefer it if it had like chocolate on it, but the chocolate melts and you just can't. It's all sticky. It's mm. on your hands. It gets on your visor. It's it's just a mess if you take any kind of chocolate in there. So All right, next question. Dream place you could build a NASCAR track. You can build a NASCAR track anywhere in the world. You, anywhere. Where would you build it to race? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I have a bucket list item of going to Australia. Now, I have no idea. I've seen pictures and videos, and it's. I feel like you can get the extremes of any place on Earth in that on that continent, country. Okay. okay. I like that. Okay. That's interesting. And then we're getting the rap signal. So really quickly, a celebrity that you get a pep talk from on race day. Any celebrity in the world, who would it be? Pitbull. Okay. Uh, that just came out. Yeah. He, he knew it. He knew uh, it. He's been in. He's been in meetings with Pitbull. Yeah. I mean, you know. What I mean? <laughs> I'm gonna get. I know. I'm gonna get a pep talk Sunday, and when uh, we're done, I'm gonna be ready to just jump in the car and take uh, off. Uh, ready to can't wait for his concert. Yep. Yeah. He's in the free race. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Ross Chastain, we appreciate the time. Best of luck this right. year. Thank y'all. Best of luck. Ross Chastain, driver of the number one car for Trackhouse Racing. Uh, he mentioned Pitbull. Mm-hmm. Pitbull is a part owner of, uh, of Trackhouse Racing. So yeah. a part of NASCAR's big diversity push, um, uh, you know, the last couple of years. Joining us now is uh, Chase Briscoe, Stuart Haas Racing driver. Chase, good to see you. How's it been going so far today? What's the What's the most uh, unique question you've heard so far today? You guys are my first thing. So. Oh, really? Oh, okay. oh my gosh. The, the We're heat, honored. They you haven't can, you used your good you stuff yet. Yeah. <laughs> the, heat, the heat is on for us to really t- uh, uh, take our game to the next level. Um, all right, I'm going to start off with uh, 
with maybe a little bit of a negative, but we're going to try to turn Alrighty. it positive, okay? Nobody at Stuart Haas last year was happy with how the season went. Um, you guys, in general, struggled. Um, how are you going to make it different this year? Well, I definitely think that we've changed a lot, you know, from, from last season. Obviously, we have the new body with the dark horse and things like that, but even just some of the processes that we're doing differently now. Uh, we got on the 14 team the same people, but we have a lot of new people in the building. Obviously, got the new logo. We've been doing all this stuff to change the visuals of the place. So just trying to, to kind of boost morale up. Uh, but I will say with a lot of those processes and just some of the people that we moved to different positions, I think are really going to move the needle. And then plus the new body is going to be way better than what we had last year. So I think we have all the – the right puzzle pieces. It's just we got to figure out how to put the puzzle together now. So okay. that uh, is something that we don't really know where we're going to stack up right now. But you know, once we get the season going, these first four or five weeks, we can kind of see where we need to get better and um, go from there. In your three starts in the Daytona 500, what have you learned? What kind of mental notes are up there? Yeah. Well, I haven't <laughs> learned how to win it yet. Uh, I uh, yeah, it's weird. You know, each one I feel like was so different. Um, you know, the rookie season, I was just out there trying to figure out what I was doing right, and then. You know, you, you go to the second year, and we were able to run third and felt like we were really in a good position. And last year, I felt like I tried to do a lot of the same things, but I was a little more aggressive and, and ended up getting myself wrecked. So I, I don't know really what the, the game plan is going into this year. But I will say I feel like last year we led a ton of laps on just super speedways in general, not not necessarily the Daytona 500, but all the other races. And I felt like I learned a lot about just running up front and how to control the race and try to save fuel when you're in the lead and things like that. But there's so much that changes after that last fuel stop. So that's where I felt like last year I learned a lot. Hopefully can try to take a little bit more control this year, uh, just trying to set myself up better for that last last run of the race instead of trying to run the first three quarters perfect. All right, the last run of the race. Uh, I've asked this a few times this morning. What position do you want to be in coming off a of turn four headed to the checkered flag? Uh, I'd probably say the lead. Okay. Uh, yeah, I feel like I could control a little bit of my own destiny. It's hard, you know. If you're in second, if you don't get the right push or run or whatever, it's hard to even do anything with the leader sometimes. Where if you're the leader, I feel like you have not maybe the slightest bit more than a 50-50 chance, right? I just feel like you can control a little bit more about your gap and things like that. But, but it's definitely harder to be on defense than it is to be on offense. So, I don't know. I'd say probably the lead, um, but it's hard to say. When you get wrecked out of a super speedway race, I'm amazed how almost all of you guys just business like you get out of the car. Yeah, you're frustrated, but you just, you know, you keep it under control. I would just be like, come on, I had a good car. <laughs> yeah. This is not yeah. my fault, but it's just part of the, it's part of the business. Yeah, right? I think I think you see more frustration in other tracks just because here there is so much out of your control, and you kind of know that going into it. Where at the other tracks, I feel like you get a little more frustrated if you wreck just because you know it's something more that you did more than likely. But, yeah, here, it's just part of the game. You know it when we wake up Sunday morning and what can happen. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even months ago we knew what, what could happen. So, yeah, it's just part of the, the nature of the beast here and definitely kind of know that what's, what can happen. All right, you've mentioned uh, control of the race, being out in front. You've mentioned offense, defense. If you're out in front, defense means blocking. How hard is it to block during a race? It's hard. Uh, it's hard to do it the right way. I, I think anytime you block the guy behind you probably gets mad, but it's it's hard to, to block and do it efficiently where you don't cost yourself positions or you know put yourself in a bad spot to get wrecked. I think, you know, nine out of ten of the wrecks we see is because of a bad block typically. So it's it's hard to <clears throat> figure out how to do it right and there's a few guys in the field that know how to do it really well and hopefully I can learn from them. When you <coughs> walk in this place this week um, especially the, the long shots that have won it the last three years, Cindric and McDowell and <coughs> Stenhouse, everybody, yourself, you walk in here and go, you know what, uh, yeah, look at Vegas odds, who cares? It may be a long yeah. shot, but I got a chance. Yeah, for sure, everybody's got a chance here, and that's kind of the cool thing about, I think, the Daytona 500 is that all 40 cars in the field have a chance, and that's something that, you know, you go to another racetrack, you don't necessarily have that. All right, Chase Briscoe, driver of the number 14 car for uh, Stuart Haas Racing. What is smoke like as a boss, Tony Stewart? You've been around him yeah. now a few years. What's he like as a boss? Yeah, he's a he's definitely I feel like a tough boss just because he knows how to do it right. You know, he he's done it every everything you can imagine to do, so he knows what it takes to do it. But I will say, you know, he's so busy doing a lot of other stuff, so it's hard for him to sometimes be there. But I think he does a really incredible job of doing it from a distance and and letting the drivers try to figure it out on their own and still be in there if they ever need them.
You mentioned earlier that morale <laughs> got down a little bit last year at times. How do, how do you get it back? I mean, meetings. Win. I mean, win. win. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah, go. Just yeah, win, you win the for 500, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Chase Briscoe, driver of the number 14 car for Stuart Haas. Man, we appreciate the yeah, time. thank you yeah. guys. Appreciate All right. it. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of media day. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have fun with it. <clears throat> the long uh, afternoon. There you yeah, go. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Truly one of the good guys in yeah. NASCAR. Um, young guy, up-and-coming driver who, uh, who who knows how to get to victory lane. Yeah. He's been in the playoffs before. Um, last season was certainly a disappointment, um, and uh, he certainly you know wants to improve upon that. Yeah. And good luck to him. <clears throat> Look at Brad Kozlowski waving to us there. He is waving to us because you know why? He's coming to sit yes. our way. Yes, yeah, indeed. come on in, Brad Kozlowski. I think I think Brad's my favorite. Brad's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> I'm anointing my favorite man. All Anointing, right. anointed. All right. That's the that's the past tense, right? <laughs> <laughs> anointed. You're always my favorite, Brad. You're always fun to talk to. Well, Brad, thank you, Brad. I don't know how relevant this is, but I was just I'm not a gambling guy, but I was just looking at Vegas odds for the Daytona 500. You you were you were the favorite on one of the odd one. Why yeah. is that? Yeah, how, how, how does that make you well, feel? You know, I think I've been the favorite <laughs> from a Vegas perspective uh, three or four times now. Okay, and uh, I don't know if a lot of people have put money on me or not, but it is not <laughs> translated to Sunday <laughs> when it matters. But uh, you know, the, the last two races here, it, really the last three races here, we've uh, you know been in position to win and, and led a lot of laps, if not the most laps, won the stages, and uh, just hasn't kind of put a bow on the end of this race yeah. and um, you know you, you got to feel like from a numbers perspective if you do that enough times you know if you put yourself in a position up front if you lead the most laps and you win the stages that uh, you know eventually it'll go your way so uh, I, I can certainly understand why some some guys in Vegas would feel that way we feel mm -hmm. that way too right yeah we Very feel good. like we can come here and win and uh, that we're doing all the right things and obviously there's a little bit of luck factor that Hasn't gone our way to date, but, uh, you know, I like the, the moves we're, we're making on the track. I like the cars we're brought, we've brought here, and uh, we got a great shot at it. All right, your life dramatically changed when you went not only from a driver to now an owner driver. Um, explain that process. You know, obviously, was it a, always a goal to have your own team and, and, and be an owner? Yeah. Um, and, I mean, and I enjoy it. And jumping in, what's, what's it like to try to do both? Yeah, I enjoy it. It's a process. It's, it's great because, um, you know, when you don't like something, you can change it. <laughs> it's bad because when you don't like something, you can't blame somebody else, right? <laughs> like you, you have to point the finger at yourself. Um, and, and that's a tough pill to swallow. It's, it's the ultimate authority accountability flip, right? You know, most people live a life where they don't have full authority, so they don't feel full accountability. But, you know, when you're the, the driver and the owner, it's like, hey, we didn't run good. Who to be mad at? Oh, <laughs> me, right? You know, so um, good and bad of it. So are you harder on yourself oh, now? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you look at every loss as your loss. Right. You know, not, not a team loss, like your loss. Like mm -hmm. you didn't put the right people in the right position to succeed with the right tools or resources. Um, and, and so, that yeah, that's that's the reality of it. You're 40 years old now. As far as your racing career, are you? Do you think you're at the end of the third quarter, beginning <laughs> of the fourth quarter? You're not in overtime. Come on, are first you? quarter, I'd, first I'd, quarter. I'd, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm in a spot where I I just want to win races, and I don't care about anything else other than that. And when, when the day comes where I don't feel like I can't win races, that'll be the day where I'll, I'll be done. And uh, right now, I know we can win races. Wow, that's exciting. Uh, your team, Chris Busher, obviously he wins races. This year, you're bringing David Reagan. Yep. Down to Daytona, so three RFK cars in the Daytona 500. If if David can race his way in, yeah. um, well, wow. hopefully he qualifies his way in tonight. Yeah. But yep. we'll see. Yep. Um, what what does it mean to have three teams? I mean, is it that much of an advantage? You know, in a place like this. You know, the, the last two years, um, you know, I think we really saw how important it is to have teammates and uh, allies in the last few laps of the Daytona 500 and. My teammate Chris Busher and I worked so well together uh, last spring in the 500. And, uh, you know, in the end, two cars wasn't enough. We needed at least one more car to, to be able to win this race. And um, we don't want to make that mistake twice. David is more than qualified to uh, be a part of RFK and to, to, you know, it's the credentials and respect that I believe he can be a threat to win on Sunday. And, and the three of us together, a formidable trio.
Mm -hmm. A few moments ago, we were talking to Carson Hosevar, a Michigan guy. You're a Michigan guy. He's a big Lions fan. He's still hurting from the Lions lob. Yeah, they yeah. were so close to the Super Bowl. Are yeah. you still feeling? Are you a big Lions fan? I am a huge Lions fan, and you know, there's a little bit of pain there. But then the, uh, there's another piece of that that is, um, you know, just remembering all the years of not even being in the playoffs. So yeah. Uh, decades. Yeah, yeah decades. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So you're like, hey, you know, there's something to be proud of here still. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Dan Campbell, are you a fan of Dan Campbell? Am, yes. And his go for it on fourth down mentality, are you a go for it on fourth down kind of driver? Uh, yes. Maybe not quite as much as Dan is, but yes. <laughs> I think he's saying something between the lines. <laughs> yeah, I, I like aggressive. Uh, there's scales of aggressive, yes. but I like aggressive. All right. All right. So on the scale of aggressiveness, where would you put yourself, one to ten? I'm like a seven. Oh, wow. oh, I okay. thought you'd be that's, a little higher than that. Yeah. It's very honest, though. It's an honest it answer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. do you want me to be honest? I mean, yeah, yes. that's, that's what we, we appreciate here. Yeah. If I'm a seven, I think Dan's like an eight or a nine. Okay. Like it. Right. He's like a like 14 it. in that last <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, uh, it, it's Valentine's Day. It's Valentine. We're asking some Valentine's Day questions to yeah, NASCAR's buddy. biggest stars. Are you ready? Yep. We're going to do three. Your favorite snack, any snack in the world. You could have under an extended caution during the Daytona 500 when you're just waiting for things to resume. You're, you're dreaming of that snack. What is it? Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly sandwich? Yeah. 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 I love, love it. Okay. Right. Okay. You didn't hesitate. Yeah. I, I right believe now. in the answer. Yeah. You can build a NASCAR track anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world now, to, to drive and compete on that track and just be in the awe, the magnitude of being in that moment, in that place. Where would it be? Canada. Uh, probably like Toronto ish. Toronto. Okay. Wow. Love it. Yeah, it's Toronto, what's, what's but Canada size, in general. What yeah. size track? A Bristol, a Martinsville, a Daytona? Uh, you know, if I'm in charge for the PL on it, uh, I'm looking uh. at around a, a mile and a quarter. Okay. 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 Right. okay. And then last question. We all know about the Taylor Swift effect in the NFL. We're going to sort of take that mindset. If you can put any celebrity on your team for Daytona. Anyone maybe to give you a pep talk, someone to rev you up, get you ready for the race? Who Any would it be? celebrity on my team? Whoa. I don't know, like a Tom Brady would be good. Ooh. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's yeah. a great pick. Number 12. Yeah. Yeah. TB12. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Awesome. Brad Keselowski, we certainly appreciate the time. You're Love welcome. your honesty. Uh, always appreciate your candor. Thank you. Very good. Thanks for your kindness, guys. Good All to right. see you again. You'll be good. All, right. All okay. the best. All right. Appreciate you. All right. Yes, Brad sir. Brad Keselowski, owner-driver at RFK, mm -hmm. but he's the driver of the number six car. Yeah, giving JV a little love back there behind the yeah. board. Uh, JV, like, I mean, throwing it out there right away that Brad was his favorite driver. I like I mean, Brad. I do, too. I, I just, I, 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 every time I, I just, I, we, we talk with him, every year we've been doing this for years now, he just seems like he's always coming from a very, um, I, I just, I just, I don't know. I, I like his, his, make, his makeup. Yep. His, it, yep. Absolutely really love his honesty. Um, and you know what? They, they could be a threat to win. I mean, they were very good. Yeah. They were very, very good here. And really close. Uh, the last couple of years yeah. along with Chris Buescher. And I do like the addition of David Reagan as a third car. Mm -hmm. David Reagan is a very, very good super speedway racer. Um, again, we are live here on the red carpet media day for the Daytona 500. Um, our opportunity to talk with a lot of drivers not only you guys hear that goat, a driver, you guys hear that goat uh, in the background. But the driver. First of all, congratulations to Jimmy Johnson being uh, inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. You, you will become the first Hall of Fame er to race again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, I, mean, you know? <laughs> I didn't know that until I walked in here this just a few minutes ago, and I was like, oh wow. I didn't make up the rules, but I'm glad to yeah. <laughs> We talked to you right before on the red carpet in Charlotte, right before you went into the Hall of Fame, and I asked you, you know, is your speech ready? How did the speech go? Were you calm up there? Did you get everything out? Yeah, I think it went as good as I could have hoped for. Um, spent some time, made sure I had my thoughts organized. I actually practiced on the teleprompter a few times uh -huh. and felt the most comfortable I have on stage. So that, that went well. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Obviously, it was some great moments with your family. It was very, it was Thank very, you. very it beautiful. Was really special for me and yeah. for our family. It was All great. right. Now you put your work hat on, right? You're going yeah. to work. Now that it's year two of you as an owner um, at Legacy Motor Club, what's different? What did you learn last year that you're going to apply this year um, for that team and to, and to make it successful? Yeah, I mean, so much has changed for us in the course of a year, especially sitting here in Daytona, from Daytona to Daytona. 
Um, but at the root of it all is uh, my partner's commitment to having a top flight tier one motorsports program. And I cannot thank Maury Gallagher enough for his commitment to this team and for bringing me in and, and letting me be a part of this journey. Uh, we've, you know, since last year, we have a new driver in John Hunter Nemechek in the 42 car. We obviously have Toyota. We have many partners like Dollar Tree and Family Dollar coming on board. Carvana's come back. Uh, Gear Wrench, Mobile One. I mean, just go on and on. It's yeah. been a very busy yeah. 12 months <laughs> for us, and especially in the last three months since the season has ended. It's, uh -huh. it's been out of control busy. Uh -huh. Of your 83 Cup wins, two of them in the Daytona 500, 06, 13. You're smiling already talking about it. <laughs> do, you, do you still have the details? And do you still remember, like, everything about those nights, those days? Certainly the last couple laps and how it played out because, you know, I won two, but I was here for, you know, not, at least 19. So that my winning percentage is quite low, <laughs> 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 lower than a competitor would like. But then you look at four plate races a year um, during my era. Now there's five with Atlanta. But it, what I'm getting at is plate racing is just so circumstantial. And, yes, you need some luck, but, yes, you need to put yourself in the position to receive luck. And so those last two or three laps are really where my, my mind goes and how I put myself in position. All right, Danny, you mentioned all the wins, um, being in the Hall of Fame. But – you have to race your way in. You do, you do not have a guaranteed starting I'm spot. I'm still lobbying with NASCAR that there should be a <laughs> Hall of Fame provision. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Come on. There should be. Yeah, there, there yeah. should be. All no right, luck, so what, it, what is your mentality to, to, to try to race your way in? I mean, it's kind of old school, really. It, it is, and I'm, I'm prepared and I'm ready, and I'm mentally prepared for the worst, that if something does not go right tonight, that uh, I need to have my game locked down and be ready for tomorrow. So – Spent a lot of time studying the duels and kind of the energy of the split field and how that plays out. You know, it's a much different race in the duels than it is in the 500 due to the car count. And um, I'm ready. You know, we'll, we'll just see what happens. We've put a ton of effort into having a fast car tonight, and mm -hmm. hopefully that pays off. All right. You've been around the sport so long, and I know you love the sport so much. What do you think of the new crop of guys coming up now and, and, the, and how they will help the future of the sport? I'm just surprised how ready these guys can be at such a young age. Um, I was a rookie when I was 25 and turned 26 later that year. And um, I had the benefit of all this testing that took place during my generation. And I had a lot of learning to do. And it's amazing to me how these kids can get so much seat time at a young age in all the minor leagues that, uh, that are now available. And then in addition to that, the time they spend in the simulators and how that sim world, the virtual world, and the real world are getting very close together. And mm -hmm. they, they show up ready to go. All right, very good. Jimmy Johnson, the Hall of Famer. Thank you. All right, best of luck not only tonight but tomorrow night, and hopefully we see you on Sunday. I hope so. Uh, Thank you. That's awesome. Thank right. you, Jimmy. Jimmy Johnson, driver of the number 84 car. I wonder, does he, do you ever have trouble, like, going to the wrong car? It's not 48, it's 84? <laughs> that's, just <laughs> so <laughs> silly. that's just so silly. But, but. I put in 84 on the graphic. I was like, wait, wait, what? Did I have that right? Uh, but you were so yeah. associated with 48. I know. I know. It's been an interesting twist on things. And I was just signing some autographs coming in and I always write the number. And I wrote 48. Yeah. And I was like, wow, oh I meant to write 84. So. Wow. <laughs> very good. Still right, gets we, appre me. we appreciate it, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, okay. Very good. Again, one of the best of all time in yeah. NASCAR history. Um, and what a, what a treat that he always has been open and honest um, over the years. Um, and what a, what a competitor yeah. um, and what the success that he had. Not only the 83 wins, but seven yeah. championships. Only Dale Earnhardt and Richard Petty yeah. um, have that many championships. I mean, we were talking mm -hmm. earlier, we were mentioning the GOAT. I mean, he is compared to Tom Brady a lot mm -hmm. because all the Super Bowls that Tom Brady won. Yep. And he was such a, a good champion. I mean, Jimmy's just – been a great champion. Over yeah, the very, years. very gracious with his time. I'll give you guys some some inside baseball here for okay. for people that are watching the Media Day live stream here. That was the only driver that we were given a very specific hard timeout. Like you have <laughs> this number of minutes, and that is it. And and we we never usually get that with drivers. They usually are. We get a few minutes here, a few minutes there, and it's usually pretty flexible. But that was all right. Jimmy Johnson. He has this amount of minutes, and that's it. He's got to go. But he wasn't yeah. in a hurry to leave. He no. wanted to keep uh, chatting. You know man. what? The bottom line is, people want to hear from him. They oh, definitely yeah. want to hear from him because he does have such a unique story to tell. Um, you know, again, a Hall of Fame career. Stepped away, went and did Indy car racing. Uh, is coming back to the sport um, as an owner, uh, part owner of a team. Now he's got three cars. Uh, so, yeah, Jimmy Johnson is uh, is a unique guy and somebody that they certainly need 
uh, everybody needs to keep an eye on because he knows how to run well and run well here at Daytona. Joining us now is Chris Busher, driver of the number 17 car for RFK Racing. Chris, great to see you. You have a pretty good history at the super speedways. What is yep. it about these tracks that just sort of bring out the best in you? Well, um, that is a good question because I really didn't care for these things for a long time. So, <laughs> But you're good at uh, it. Yeah. Certainly, uh, I've had um, had fast race cars, which certainly makes me look better than I am. Uh, but I have had some good teachers through the years. Uh, I have a great spotter on the roof with uh, with Mike Herman Jr. Um, we've been able to, uh, to really work uh, diligently to – work together as teammates when it comes to these races and that's been um you know brad and myself uh now with david uh reagan in the the 60 car excited about that opportunity for us uh, you know all that uh just gives us more chances to go uh go out here and, and look good but like i said we know we're gonna have the speed uh we've studied really hard for these things uh we, we work really hard to find each other's teammates knowing that we can trust each other's pushes um that you're going to Stay in line, stay committed to try and make those runs work. You're not going to leave each other out. Um, all that goes a long way when we go to these places to where we're able to, to really make a lot of headway in, in ways that, yeah, you probably could with another driver at times. Um, but at some point, you know, they're going to look out for themselves and they're going to pull out and they're going to leave you hanging. And next thing you know, all the work you just did, it's for nothing. So, um, you know, when we do that and, uh, and we make this uh, – this very deliberate decision to, to find each other and, and you know be up front and, and working um, off each other's uh, uh, bumpers, it um, makes it look really good and, uh, and puts us in, in really good spots. Yeah. As, as we mentioned, you've done pretty well. Uh, eight starts, you've had a third, a fourth, and a fifth finish. But how, does, how do you deal with this since you're a competitor that there's so much luck involved here? How do you just <laughs> – that's just – how do you deal with that? Well, uh, I'm glad to hear you say that because – uh, early on in my career, I heard way too many times that you make your own luck and there's no such thing. And I, I don't, I never bought into that. I, <laughs> I was calling BS on it real quick because <laughs> there is a certain amount of luck involved when you go speedway racing. And uh, you know, yeah, you you try and control your own destiny. You try and be ahead of it. Uh, you know, that being said, the crashes have come from the front row a lot lately. Uh, the statistics on that used to look very different. Used to be a, a big danger zone right there at yeah. like 11th to 13th. Well, now it's pretty consistent from 1 to 25. And uh, and then, yeah, it's really safe from 32nd to 36. <laughs> really safe. But no one's running there. So, uh, you know, not, uh, not on purpose. So, with that, um, you just got to understand uh, that, that there is that factor in there. And that's honestly helped me enjoy speedway racing better. I didn't like it for a long time because of that, because I didn't feel like I was in control. Um, that I thought there was a ton of luck, and, and there is a certain amount. Um, but then it, it did take a, a little bit of uh, self-reflection to uh, to sit down and say, you know what, yes, there's luck involved, but if it's the same four or five cars up front every time and, and the same car winning a lot of these things, at some point you got to say there's there's something else to it. And there is a, a, a certain factor, a skill set, um, a, a mentality to it that has certainly um, you know, helped me be better and, and Come to uh, appreciate them, enjoy them, and uh, and then just take that luck factor and say, you know what, sometimes it's going to happen. And actually, Jack Jack put it best. Uh, this was a couple years ago, and um, he told me he said, "There's uh, we we got in an accident. We run and go. Got in an accident. I was really mad." And uh, and Jack said, "You know what? It's just the tax." I said, "What tax?" He said, "Well, sometimes when you go super speedway racing, there's uh, there's a tax you pay, and that tax is losing a race car." He said, it's just the tax. Can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, expensive, okay. but yeah, it's a, <laughs> uh, very expensive. <laughs> I mean, he probably should have been more upset than me. Yeah. But. <laughs> um, Brad Keselowski has come in to uh, Roush Fenway, now RFK Racing. What what has he brought to the table for that team, uh, your team? So much. Um, not that uh, we, don't, we don't have enough time to go through everything, but uh, – you know what? There's a. Uh, it's interesting. Brad and and Jack remind me so much of each other, and uh, and I don't know if either of them would admit that um, or, or agree with me on that. But man, it is um it, it is is very, <laughs> very stunning to see that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Brad's mindset. Um, he's very analytical in a lot of his thinking. Um, we've really. Uh, taken a, a real deep dive into detail work and uh, and understand that this car is very close together uh, across the field, and that's going to come down to the smallest things to make a difference. Um, and he's 
been a firm believer in that from the get go, and uh, and sometimes that's you know making sure that um, you know a bolt is as short as it can possibly be. Sometimes that's saying, look, a clean environment gives us clean race cars, which makes us more proficient. Uh, you know, sometimes it's as simple as that, and uh, and maybe that's the most notable one that noticeable one that that people would see when they come to the shop is it doesn't look the same at all. It's mm-hmm. very clean. It's very black and white. Uh, you know, there, there's no no color anywhere in there. The the stations are all very organized, and um, and it's just to make our our environment more proficient. And uh, we feel like that is is found speed for us. And and yeah, people. Uh, you're going to have those that, that have worked in racing their whole lives. are going to say, well, the four being clean is not going to make us faster. Well, even those those people are, are bought into it now and, and say, you know what? It's it's a little bit of a pride thing that, yeah, directly that four being clean does not make our car sit on the pole at Daytona. But it is just that, that pride in, in workmanship in, in your environment that's helped carry over. So um, that's scratching the surface. Gotcha. Um, and that's... Uh, being generous because there's so much more to it, but um, you know, just a couple things uh, along the way like that that, uh, that start adding up. All when right. you walk this red carpet and you walk by that trophy, the Daytona 500 trophy, is that? Do you say I want to have it, or is I gotta have that before my <laughs> career is over? Which you're not close to the end of your career, but I gotta have it. Yeah, I, it's um, you gotta have that one, right? <laughs> uh, it, 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 I say that, and uh, and also people have asked me like, what are your bucket list races? What which ones do you have to have? And um, I only had one, and, and that was uh, the Bristol Night Race. Mm-hmm. Like that was that was my race. It's the one I've always wanted to win. And outside of that, I want to win everywhere. I want to win every weekend. Um, you know, there, there's not really one that uh, that I have circled as, as that specific one. But um, that trophy is a little cooler than all the rest. So, you know, all just right. in that scenario, you, you don't want to take that one home for that reason. But um, it's the Daytona 500, so it's obviously uh, so much history behind this race. You want to you wanna make it happen. We've been very close at times. Uh, we've been in the running. We've been competitive even once we finished poorly. We've had good days leading up to those. So um, it's just about about finishing that last uh, 1% of the race. Yeah, you've won, some, you've yeah. won qualifying races here. Um, so, I mean, your car has been very, very fast. Uh, it's Valentine's Day. We are we have been asking some, uh, you know, odd questions. Uh, Valentine's J- J- Day J- J- JB, the third Chris, voice here. nice to meet okay. you. Uh, JB, um, fire away. Chris, your, your, the, the snack you would love to have with you, any snack in the world now, with you, during caution at the Daytona 500, what would it be? During a caution at the Daytona 500? You just snack away just while you're waiting for things to resume. Just while you're getting going? Yeah. Man, that's a... Uh, Do you have stuff in the car normally? I don't. No? So I, I, I've, I tried, I tried um, granola bars one time. Chocolate <laughs> chip granola bars. Turns out inside the race car is a little warm. And um, <laughs> Did you should have chips in my them? gloves, yeah. man. They were nasty. So, <laughs> like, like that would be my my initial answer is, well, I just want a granola bar or something. Uh-huh. But it didn't work. And and I know some people have food, in there and I just don't understand. So, I guess I guess I would want a granola bar if I can figure out how in the world to make it happen. It's very wholesome. Yeah. It's a wholesome response. No, no, cool, no cooler in there. You know, you slip it in the cooler in the right, yeah. <laughs> right, right down in between. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dream place you would love to race under the idea that you could build a track anywhere in the world to add to the NASCAR circuit, what would it be? Um, if you could, uh, so I really want to see us at Irwindale. Uh, that's not building my own racetrack. That is, I've, I've raced at that track once. I've been to it two times maybe. Um, I loved racing there. It was an ASA speed truck back in the day. Um, I love that racetrack. It was so much fun. I actually Kind of makes me feel a little bit of Iowa vibes in a, in a way. So, uh, and I'm pumped for Iowa too. But I would love to go to Irwindale in, in, in Cup cars. And okay. then, lastly, celebrity. You could pick any celebrity in the world you could have on your team for race day. Who would it be? Any celebrity on your team for race day. Let's see. What do you need them to do first? Is give just give you a pep talk. Yeah, yeah. Is the yeah. pep talk. Yeah, rev you uh, up. Mm. Or they could be on, like the pit, on the on the box. You know? Someone up on. We need yeah. like like uh, muscle. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Dang. 
Thanks. You could get me in trouble. It's quieter. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you need you need muscle for uh, for fighting out of the track, right? So uh, when you like The Rock or somebody, hey, go, go be here Sunday. He's going to be here on Sunday. That's How about right. that? Yeah, He's a yeah. right. marshal. That's right. Look yep. at that. All right. So we can get him on the box. Right. There you go. <laughs> love it. Love All right. it. Uh, Chris Busher, we appreciate the time. You are very welcome. Thank right. you. Best of luck this year. Chris Busher, driver of the number 17 car for RFK Racing. And with Brad Keselowski and David Reagan, I mean, he's a he's a threat to win. Yeah. No doubt about it. Joining us now is Bubba Wallace. All right. Michael Jordan I, will be my uh, my yeah, motivational speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just get, that, let's yeah. get this right yeah. out of the way I was early. like, is he, is he really fumbling the bag? Uh, yeah. Did, did, That's all right. Do you think he forgot that LeBron James bought into the team? No, I wouldn't no. put that on him. No. Oh, there's no, no cameras. No. Oh, there's a camera right there. <laughs> Bubba, have you ever gotten a pep talk from Michael Jordan? Has he ever, like, pulled you aside and said, man, like, like whispered in your ear to get you revved up or anything uh, like that? No, no. He's he's not that type. Um, but he has seen some things throughout the the year or things that I've said about myself. And he's like, hey, man, cut it out. Let's go out and race and go out and compete. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Kind of like, you know, yeah. like, a Michael just Jordan. like reassurance, like, yeah. hey, you got this. So. I think it's it's pretty special. So here we are, 2024 20, awesome. 500. Let's go. Let's do it. Mm. Yeah. Very good. You've been close in this Daytona 500 a couple of times. One of my most memorable visuals of uh, when you finished second, you got so close, just right afterward. The media, want, we want to talk to you, but yeah. you took your helmet off and you were just like like yeah. this. And it really hit 2022. me. 2022. Like, yeah. It really hit me like, man, you really wanted that. Yeah. Well, we went from, you know, coming off turn four. That was when Cindric won. Came off turn four and you kind of – um, accepted your defeat because I was third at the time. And it's like, all right, well, I'll probably just push Blaney here because I'm stuck to his bumper. So wherever he goes, I'm going to follow. Well, then they get together. And so I just go to miss the wreck. And then you find out how close you were at the end. And you're like, damn, <laughs> yeah. almost. <laughs> so almost. you just went from, from, I guess, from here to yeah. here to back down there yeah. so fast. And you're like, what just happened? So a lot of that was trying to process it. So, um. Yeah, I think, you know, you keep putting yourself in that category, bound to get your name pulled at yeah. one time. Yeah, I can remember the, the first time you finished second, yeah. you were in the media room. Yeah, balling. And your family was yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, very touching. Yeah. yeah very, very yeah. touching. Do you reflect back on that at all uh, that when you one, come when you roll through the tunnel here? Yeah, no, that one – I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and I winded up second. <laughs> <laughs> I just yes. survived. Uh, there was three wrecks where I was in, and somehow I made it out the other side. Oh. So uh, that one was just uh, obviously had a lot riding on my shoulders with family there. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, Daytona, that's Daytona. That's the 500. It produces great stories no matter who you are or where you finish. So it's uh, it's cool to be going for my seventh day 2500 here. yeah uh, awesome every time i talk to you i always have to get an update on asher we're dog people yeah we have yeah golden, we have golden doodles okay but <laughs> asher is a big part of your life your dog absolutely he's good uh he just got a fresh bath yesterday all right yeah he's been into everything he had come up with like a stomach bug oh, during asher. imsa weekend it was literally like the human stomach bug but it it ruined the whole bus, so that's been uh, fun. We've been staying in the bus for a month since yeah. IMSA weekend. So did he get um, on a commercial? Fun. Yeah, he He's was famous. Yeah, he is famous. Yeah, he was on the side of a race car. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it's uh yeah. It, you, you get know. any residuals from that? Hell no. Come on, <laughs> you know that. Uh, that was a fun partnership with uh, with DoorDash and, and PetSmart there, but um, no, Asher's doing good. He is he he has separation issues. He's so spoiled. That he is mad every time you leave. Yeah. It's like, hey man, I gotta go out and check the mail. Oh, he's ready to rip your head off. <laughs> but then when you come back, oh, yeah. like all dogs are so excited good. to yeah. see you. Yeah, They're very good. Yeah. All right, let's look ahead to this yeah. 2023 season, 2024 season uh, for you in the 23 car. Been there long enough now to where you are you're comfortable. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's your place yep. now. Yep. It's your seat. Um, what mm -hmm. do you need to do to take that next step in your journey in your career? Man, when. Winning solves everything, right? Um, you know, I, I look back at last year, what we were able to do for our team and our sponsors and myself, and the biggest thing I took away from that was self, uh, self-confidence, okay. self-belief, you know, something I lacked over the last six years uh, to where I'm at right now. Like, couldn't be any more excited to get the season started. Um, we got two races here to start off that, 
is survival mode. Mm -hmm. So if you do the right things, put yourself in the right spot, you come up with a great finish. But then we get to Vegas and Phoenix, and then our season kind of starts there. So I couldn't be more ready to get to that point um, and showcase what we can do. So I know it's not going to be a cakewalk. You know, I feel like what we're able to do is, is right there in front of us. But we got to work to get there. We got to bust our tails to uh, to put all the races together. So on the surface, it sounds like a silly question, but it's hard to win out here, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> gotta kind of run with that. Is yeah. these guys are good? Yeah. Yeah. Denny's uh, he's been in since oh six oh five, right? Yeah. At the Gump mm -hmm. level, and I've been in since twenty eighteen. Twenty seven. Yeah, twenty eighteen. So do the math, right? That's just a lot of experience, a lot of laps, um, and a lot of miles. So. He's got a notebook that's this big, whereas mine is this big, right? So you're always just behind, but you have those moments. I look at Kansas. Uh, I look at Talladega where we got our two wins, and he was in the field, you know, a lot of these guys, and um, we were able to beat them. You know, uh, Harvick was uh, very instrumental in my career. I'll never forget, you know, stop crashing shit. That's what he told me. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, all right, you know, he's, he's mad because I'm sure he's involved in the crash that I caused. So you're mad at him for saying that, but then at the end of the day, it's like, the more races I stop crashing, the more I learn. The more I learn, the more I have a better chance of winning. Yep. So there's some proof in the pudding there. You just got to put it all together. So it's uh, it's super hard. Uh, and, and the thing about it is I always tell people, uh, you start out at the bottom rung on a ladder. That's where you start, right? You get to the next one. However long your ladder is, is up to you. Um, but if you can make it to the, la uh, to the cup level, what's after the cup level? Hall of Fame. Oof. Right? That's Yeah. I, you would hope. You yeah. would hope. That's one of those – that's like jumping up five <laughs> rungs, you know. Uh, but after what I think is retirement. Okay. You know, you got to retire before you, you get into the Hall of Fame, fame. you know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brand new shop for 2311 yeah. Racing. What, what what will that do for your team? Gets a lot of eyeballs. Hopefully it doesn't cause too many accidents there on I-77 because it's <laughs> yeah. nice. It's, it's big. Uh, it's big for sure. They did a really good job. Uh, Denny's vision. I didn't know he was so passionate about architect and all that stuff. Learned a lot about him in the Netflix doc. But um, yeah, I think it's it's incredible. And and right now it kind of feels like um, you know still move in day. Like all of our stuff's moved in. We're working, but you still got some of the the workers there fixing little things and tinkering with this and that. So I would say let's give it let's give it three or four months to where we're fully moved <coughs> in and and all the little things are out of the way and, and we're good and we're operating so it's uh it's cool so appreciate being a part of this team very humbling for sure and uh yeah let's uh let's go have some fun in the new shop it's awesome yeah. very good Bubba. Right. we appreciate thank you guys the time. thank you i appreciate it's always great to cool. see you okay. thanks uh bubba wallace driver of the number 23 car for 2311 racing denny hamlin and michael jordan are the owners um there they again are. he potentially <laughs> you know he's he's one of those breakthrough drivers you know got to keep yeah got to keep an eye on as we head into the 2024 season. He's been good for, for the sport, brought in a lot of uh, new viewers to the sport. He's mm -hmm. passionate about it. He, yeah. he's, he's there at the end here in the Daytona 500 a, a number of times. So yeah. we'll see what happens this yeah, week. It's pretty interesting, though, to, to hear him talk about, um, you know, that first year when he had his family, yeah. you know, when he finished second the mm -hmm. first time and he had his family. Um, but uh, – yeah, you need you need your headphones and you need a microphone, Zane. <laughs> All right. So uh, Zane Smith joining us now. One of the three rookies in the class of 2024. Um, so what's it like? Your first media day headed yeah. up to the Daytona 500. Yep. Uh, what's it been like for you? Yeah, well, you could tell I'm a rookie how I just walked up here. And just, like, <laughs> Where's the what headset? You, yeah. <laughs> what camera I'm looking at or what's going on. But, yeah, it's it's awesome to be back. Race uh, was able to race into this race uh, last year, and it's honestly just an event of its own. This is a different vibe, different atmosphere, and it's um, I feel a lot better right now going into qualifying, knowing I'm locked in. Um, so we're already off on a on a better foot than, than last year, but – um, excited to be back and, and be back part of the Daytona 500. You mentioned racing in last year. What kind of pressure is that to get in? And then what, what did you learn from last year's race? Yeah, well, I mean, like growing up as a kid, I always wanted to make it uh, to Sunday, right? And um, we all know how big the Daytona 500 is, but once you do media day, you really realize how big this event is. Mm -hmm. And so that was really cool to see. And then once Sunday came around and obviously the pressure of me not qualifying in on time, I think Jimmy and 
uh, one of the 2311 cars uh, took those slots and then um, I fortunately had a good duel and, and transferred in and then uh, once Sunday came around I actually had a pretty good starting spot was around some really good guys I've had a lot of success in this race and learned a lot uh, it's a, a long long day <laughs> and um, and yeah it was it was great I feel uh, better going into uh, this Sunday um, just more experience the last two trips I've had here on the truck side we've been able to to win so if I could even come close to having um, that success uh, come the Daytona 500, it'll be a really good day. Uh, you're in a very unique situation. Uh, you know, you've signed a contract with Trackhouse Racing. Um, that's your future. Um, but you're riding, driving this year for Spire Motorsports. Yep. E explain how those dynamics are working for you this year. Yeah, it's definitely a very confusing and, and <laughs> different situation uh, than to explain to, I guess, the fans' eye. But uh, I pretty much got my driving rights acquired by, by Trackhouse Racing, and they had to figure out uh, a home for me. Uh, and so that fell under the Spire banner. So my race car, everything is done at Spire. Um, the the people have been kind of taken under the wing of, of Trackhouse, all the, the men and women on, on our 71 Chevy. Um, so I... It's it's definitely a very confusing situation, um, but yes, if if we do have success and in, in interviews, I do have to thank two race teams. So, um, but no, it's it's been awesome. Uh, been a lot on my plate throughout this off season, kind of getting to know both race teams. Um, but yeah, I'd say I'm at both shops the equal amount. All right, being a rookie this year, how do you think? How are rookies treated? How are you going to be treated this year by the guys? I don't know. It's uh, we'll know very shortly. <laughs> yeah. here. So, um, I I expect to be treated fairly. I at least have had uh, eight cup starts last year, and so um, to get my feet wet getting into Sunday has been a lot. Like that's it's done a ton for me. So super fortunate for those starts I was able to have last year with Front Row Motorsports and and everything. F fr Front Row Motorsports has done for me in the past, not only last year, but the year before, winning the truck championship. And then, um, yeah, and, and so now just it's a fresh start, it seems like, and um, we're, we're full-time cup racing, so it's, it's exciting. It's a strong rookie class this year. Um, during races, are you going to be paying attention where Josh Berry is? Are you going to be paying attention where Carson Hosevar is? To be honest, no, not really. Oh, okay. um, it's such a long year, and and. I, how I approach things is you just kind of race the the best of your ability, do the small things right, and and I feel like the results will come. So um, that's how I approach things. But but yeah, come year end or uh, once the, those battles tighten up, you you I feel like naturally kind of will check the phone, check the where they're at in points <laughs> and whatnot. But um, our focus is on on everyone, not just them. Very good. Zane Smith, right. we appreciate the time. Thank you. Good luck awesome. to you on Sunday. Good luck, right. Zane. Thanks, right. Driver of the number 71 car for Spire Motorsports this season. Boy, that team has really changed yeah. um, recently. Not just Corey LaJoy, but they got Zane Smith. They also have Carson Hosevar. Um, so that is uh, that is pretty, pretty interesting how that Spire Motorsports is going to uh, attack this 2024 season. Yeah, You're looking at the uh, Denny man. Hamlin. Uh, driver of the number 11 car for uh, Joe Gibbs Racing, but he's also the co-owner of 2311 Racing. Uh, man, he is one busy man. Um, Denny, we appreciate the time. Great to see you. You're on with uh, with uh, our countdown to Daytona on Nextstar. Uh, we're streaming over 200 uh, stations across the Love country. Um, and uh, you're a three-time winner of the Daytona 500. What's it going to take to be a four-time winner of the Daytona 500? I'm going to have to go back to my old ways. Uh, I know it's a shock to many, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to have to be more selfish. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think that they see me as a pretty selfish driver anyway, um, and some of that was portrayed during the Netflix uh, documentary. But I think that what gave me the results that from the previous Daytona 500s was being selfish at times and, and really – uh, waving bye bye to the strategy of well I've got if I'm behind this person I need I have to push them like well I don't agree with the move that they might make right so uh -huh. why do I have to go with them that's not in my best interest I think uh, 
getting back to doing what was successful for us is what we're going to start doing this again this year. Speaking of being selfish, you have three Daytona 500 wins, but are there a couple of others? Like, do you, man, I should have had four. I, I, oh, yes. Fifth, I, I could have. I should have. Yeah, I, I mean, I think about this, the failures more than the successes. I mean, 2018, I controlled the last restart and chose the wrong line because I didn't trust my instincts. Instead, I overthought it. Austin Dillon wins it, right? I mean, that could have been my, you know, <laughs> my, my fourth. Mm-hmm. There's many others where I controlled the last restart, mm-hmm. didn't win. So, but those failures also helped me win in those same situations, you know, a few years later. So, uh, I feel like legitimately there was five that is out there yeah. that was very easily easily won. But, uh, you know, I feel like I'm three for five in those yeah. scenarios. <laughs> All right. Uh, you mentioned the Netflix documentary or docu-series. Um you were you were the star. I mean, you were the the main character. How how was it having those cameras with you constantly? Um, and did you hold anything back, or was that all Denny all yeah, the time? I, I felt like it accurately portrayed who I was. I mean, I thought that they did a very fair job as far as that's concerned. I think that how I was portrayed was accurate. How I see the other drivers that were on there portrayed was how I see them. So I thought that that was very fair in that instance. So, and you see the highs and lows of it, right? You see me trash talking the fans one minute. <laughs> you see the ultimate defeat when we get knocked out after Martinsville and me with my family. All those things happen in real life. You just don't necessarily see it, right? Mm-hmm. You see the persona that's out there that, you know, screw you guys, I'm the man, whatever. <laughs> but then there is a there is a, a guy that still has kids and I have to turn the switch off and, and be a family guy. Um, and then you see, you know, kind of the aspect of my parents and what they mean to me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's all out there. It's just now people see it a little more. Right. Yeah. How did you have do it? Yeah. Dad, dad laid down the law. He did. He does not <laughs> want you to say, I beat your favorite driver. So he did. He, he <laughs> gave me the call and said, you can't do that. No, I didn't. I didn't promise that I wouldn't say something else. <laughs> so I'm trying to. I'm trying to skirt the rules here and just say that yes, Dad, I agreed I would not say that anymore. That doesn't mean I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> How do you have that trust that uh, to have cameras on y'all? That I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. That's crazy. It's just. I don't know. I just got a little more. I just had the mentality that you are free to follow me anywhere until I say no. And I never really felt uncomfortable. I never had to fake it. I just let them do their own thing. And I knew that the more access that I gave them, the more accurately my mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. my story was going to be told, right? So if I only give them 10% of my life, that snippet might not be who I really am, right? So if I give them all of it, mm. then I, I now I'm crossing my fingers that <laughs> they're, they're going to produce it yep. correctly. Luckily for me, they did. Uh, and I thought it was an overall positive for uh-huh. me. The, the I, big, the big takeaway for you from the Netflix thing was how are, are there not twenty four hours in, in, or twenty five hours in the day? Are, are time management mm-hmm. for you is that like a big part of your life? Because you, the podcast, racing, being being you know at home with your family, all the things you have to do in, in a single day. I um, I need to do a better job of it. To be honest with you, I, this year I'm going to try to set aside more me time. Now, what I choose to do with that me time, it could be more time with the kids. It might be, okay, I'm, I'm going golfing. But I need to have, I need to do a better job of saying I'm not working now. Because I don't. I don't have the, the ability to say no. And when I want to be involved in everything, the ceiling detail of a shop or the clothes that my employees wear or doing a podcast or whatever, I love to work. I, I love to work. I love to keep myself busy. If I have a meeting that ends at 3.30, I'll start another one at 3.45. I just, that's how I've been wired. But I think that that is not sustainable over the long run. I've got to reel that back a little bit because what you saw is real. I am one place to the next, to the next, to the next. I always wondered, how does Ryan Seacrest do all these things that he's doing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it now. I see how. But I, I just, I've got to. It's not sustainable for me. I've mm-hmm. got to reel it back some. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well. Um, obviously, you have a have had a great career. You've got all the things on your resume, except yep the championship. You have not shied away from that that challenge. Um, in your podcast and many of your other interviews, you've talked about how much that that carrot that championship is your motivation. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I've. You know, got 
seven, eight majors, you know, were the big events that, mm-hmm. that we have in NASCAR. Um, the, the championship has the, been the most elusive for various reasons, right? And what I, it's hard to explain to the casual fan is that, you know, how we decide the championship is different than other, other, other sports, right? When you're eliminated from the playoffs in other sports, you, you're watching from home, right? Mm-hmm. Where in ours, the, the competition that is not even part of the playoff picture can cause a caution that can derail your entire strategy that you were playing out. So it's very, very different. And the, and the sample size in which they crown a champion has just gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, me, I feel like I can win each and every week, so I want the sample size to be as big as possible, mm-hmm. right? That's how I'm going to have success. Um, because all those little variables that happen that can knock you out, I don't like it decided in one race because there is so many things that are out of our control. But, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't change my passion for wanting to accomplish it, right? I think that uh, will it define me? No. It's certainly from the inside, it's not going to define me. I'm very grateful for all the wins that I've had. Um, again, it, it, trying – you know, seeing how much it means to my parents, right? I mean, that that is a driving factor in how hard and how long I'm going to continue to do this. But I'm also not naive to think that I'm 43. Of, there will be a day where these the performance drops off the cliff. Cliff, I'm not going to be out here just making laps. I I, I want to know that I can win my very final race. So, I I. That performance is not dropping off today. It ain't going to be this week or this year. <laughs> I, I'm not naive to think that it won't happen in a few years, but I know that window is slowly closing. Very good. Awesome. Right, Appreciate your honesty. All right. All right. Thank Danny you guys. Hamlin, driver of the number 11 luck, car Danny. for Joe Gibbs number Racing. Four. All right. Also, the co owner of 2311 Racing with Tyler Reddick and Bubba Wallace. Um, but uh, he does have a lot on his plate. Yeah. Boy, he juggles so, so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah. All right, Riley, how are you? Riley Herbst with uh, Stuart Haas Racing. Uh, great to see you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having we me. We appreciate the time. Um, boy, you got a lot on your plate this year. Um, full-time Xfinity, handful of starts in the, in the Cup Series. H- how, do you, how do you get it all, you know, make it all happen? Yeah, well, I'm excited. Uh, just kind of taking it day by day. Obviously, first things first is qualifying here for the Daytona 500. Um, eyes and focus and everything towards the cup car and then once Friday rolls around the Xfinity guys get here and we'll be focused on the Xfinity car and um, trying to go compete for a championship in that series and um, that's kind of obviously where my main focus is and in this series I'm just trying to learn um, run every lap just learn 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 and continue to grow. How is that tough uh, pressure wise to come down here knowing you're not in yet but we can get in if we have a good night tonight or in the duels? Yeah it's uh it's a little pressure packed, but luckily we do have a charter, so we are uh, locked in the race. I'm not one of the few guys racing in, but um, like I said, we're just here to learn and um, have a good night tonight and kind of see how the race tomorrow unfolds. All right. Now, you, you're you a young guy. Um, there's three rookies uh, this year in the Cup Series. Do you look at those guys and go, I, I, I beat them. I, I, I can handle them. I mean, are you chomping at the bit for that full-time Cup Series ride? I think eventually um, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. But um, to be completely honest, my focus is on the Xfinity Series, um, trying to get more wins there, um, lead more laps, win more stages, and uh, just kind of see how that year unfolds and hopefully we put ourselves in a position to be in Phoenix and um, just go back up Stuart Haas's Xfinity title um, with one over the 98. How special is this place when you come in that tunnel and just, just get into this place? This, this track, how, how special is it to you? Yeah, it's uh, it's second to none coming in the tunnel this morning. Um, just all the history and the memories as a fan watching this race. Um, I was here for the, the nail-biter photo finish between Denny and Martin. So um, just as a fan, and it's cool to to now step back and be in the Great American Race and in the Daytona 500 is um, a feeling second to none. So I'm excited, and uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Where would you sit? Where were you in the grand? Were you in the grandstands or were you in the infield? I was actually on the roof of the 500 club. Oh, so really? Right yeah. here, yeah. Ah, so I had a perfect, cool. uh, ah. perfect shot at the start finish line. Ah. Yeah. You, you must know people, right? To be up there <laughs> as a fan. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 So it was. Uh, it was good. All right. Realistic goals, um, expectations for, for this year. When you're at an organization like Stuart Haas, with a, with an owner like Tony Stewart, so successful. One at every level. Um, 
winning is the expectation. How do you, how do you deal with that 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 level of expectations? Well, I just think you have to take it race by race and understand where our program is, where the 98 and the 00 are, um, where the expectations of our owners are. Like you said, Mr. Haas and Tony are in it for one reason, and is that to win races. And um, you have to kind of take all that in, and then you also have to be realistic. Now, you can't win every race as much as you want to try. So, But uh, finishing up last year with four, five straight top five finishes, my first win at Las Vegas, um, I think we all have the momentum in the world on our side in the 98 team, and hopefully we can carry that into this year and continue to get some more checkered flags. All right, very good. But for the Daytona 500, you're in the 15 car yep. with uh, Rick Ware Racing. Correct, yeah. How, do, how does those <laughs> kinds of deals come come about? Who makes the call? Not is Tony Stewart, or are you making the call, or does Rick Ware call you and say, hey, I want you in my car? Uh, not me. It was, it was more <laughs> of a Stuart Haas, Rick Ware thing, okay. um, a really good partnership, and thankful for both teams working together. Obviously, with the Ford back in between both teams, it's, uh, it's kind of seamless. So I'm very grateful for the opportunities I have and looking to uh, capitalize on it. All right, very good. All right, JB, you got a couple yeah, questions for this man here? Yeah. It's, it's Valentine's it's day. day, Riley. We're celebrating okay. Valentine's Day. We're not right? going to make it too hard, we promise. So some Valentine's Day questions, some fun questions for you. Uh, your favorite snack, the snack you would love to have under caution. Any any snack in the world? Ooh, I uh, I like pretzels. You're a pretzel guy? Yeah, I like I pretzels. Love, oh, man, I I'm like a pretzel pretzels. guy, too. That's yeah, a I like great the one. salty more than the sweet. Yep, okay. and, and pretzels are good enough. You could probably eat. You know, in the in the car, right? I mean, so For sure. you know, yeah. it's not like we had a melted granola bar yeah. earlier. Yeah, that's, that's Chris that's, Busher. <laughs> said he's tried it, and then his gloves got all messed up. Yeah, seems like a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. How, how like about this nightmare. one? A dream place you would love to race. You could build a track anywhere in the world and race that track, and I mean anywhere in the world, not even just the U.S. Anywhere. Um, I've always said I'd like to um, at least take the Cup cars to Spa. I think that'd be pretty cool. Obviously, that track's already built and established, but I've just been a fan of Formula One as a kid and um, watching the old F1 cars go up the hill at Spa is, is pretty neat. So it'd be kind of cool to see a stock car do it. I think that's our first Formula yes. One answer today, yeah, right? Yeah. That's that's pretty yep. cool. Yep. All yep. right. And then lastly, uh, celebrity. Any celebrity that you would love to have on your team on Sunday for the Daytona 500? Someone to maybe give you a pep talk to get you motivated or somebody that you would love to have in your corner, who would it be? Ooh, uh, Matthew McConaughey for sure on the pit box. Okay. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. One of these days, maybe that will happen. You yeah. never know. Soon. You never know. Yep. Outstanding. All right, Riley Herbst, man, we appreciate the time. Thank Great you. to see you appreciate as it. always. Good luck right. this good luck to you. this week in the Daytona 500. And of course, he'll be a threat in the Xfinity series. Yeah. Um, he's that. Uh, he is that strong uh, with Stuart Haas Racing and Stuart Haas Racing backing. Um, but, again, uh, very interesting afternoon uh, yeah. to this point, media day, red carpet here uh, for the Daytona 500. There's the uh, trophy back there that everybody's going to want to get their name on. Um, and it's interesting, like, Victory Lane is, like, we can almost reach out and touch I, it. I, you know, it's right there. It's so funny, Danny, you say that. I'm going to ask Chris here if maybe we could just kind of show where we are in yeah. relation to Victory Lane because it literally is. It's it's right here. Yeah, we're we're and we're located in the, uh, the the Speedway Club. Yeah, right um, over here. And uh, it is right behind Victory Lane. Victory Lane, if you've never been to the Daytona International Speedway, is basically in line with the start finish line. Um, Boy, these guys are working hard. JB's yeah. gonna get. He's gonna <laughs> open the door. Go open the door. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Uh, All right, Chris Weaver on the camera. He's, I think he's uh, tethered. Yeah, yeah he's, he's tethered. <laughs> he's, he's connected. Um, but that's where your life gets changed, right there. You yep. win this race, you celebrate there, and yeah. things take off. You for know, you. And, uh, over the years covering this race, uh, it is always cool to be in Victory Lane mm -hmm. and to watch that car pull in, watch the confetti. You know, the confetti camera cannons. Uh, go off and, yeah. and blow the confetti everywhere. And how many pictures um, do they take? About 300, and it's like one, two, three, and you go, woo! Uh, Everybody take, goes, woo! Listen to me. They take more than 300, <laughs> man. You need you need to spend a little bit more time in Victor oh, Lane when they're taking there it pictures. Is. All right, so we have untethered now, <laughs> thanks to Chris. That, <laughs> and this is a live world look at the World racing. Center of Racing. How about that? The um, the thing about the Daytona International Speedway is, you know, it, it, it the, the – the slogan is up there on the building. It says the World Center of Racing. I mean, so much history here, not only with NASCAR, but you have the, uh, the, the Rolex 24 race. I mean, there really is so much history here. 
And it is mm-hmm. it is a bucket list item yeah. for many many of these drivers. Yeah, we were talking about Bubba Wallace how it's really hard to win. It's really hard to win. I mean, how long did did it take for Dale Earnhardt to win this race? Twenty years. <laughs> yeah, twenty I mean, years. Twenty years of trying. Mike Joy, yeah. um, from Fox was, uh, or he was at CBS at the time. But uh, the fa- the famous call: twenty years of yeah. trying, and Dale Earnhardt uh, eventually won the Daytona Five Hundred. Um, Shout but, out to Chris, by the way, yeah. for the, the live look at Victory Lane. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, again, we are on the red carpet here uh, at the Daytona International Speedway for Media Day leading up to the Daytona 500. It is one of NASCAR's. It is the race in NASCAR racing. Joining us now is Christopher Bell, driver of the number 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. He was in NASCAR's Final Four. He had a shot at winning the championship last year. Also a prominent role in the Netflix documentary um how, how did you feel that went did you like the way you were portrayed uh so honestly i haven't watched it really what? so i i i don't know why but i've always had this thing i can't watch myself like in interviews i don't watch any of my post-race interviews um and i'm not gonna watch the netflix documentary. guys oh, okay. we, we have found the one person wow. in the room who hasn't seen it yeah yeah, yeah yeah all right i've watched it okay i liked it and well, i thought good. i thought you were portrayed very well Okay, that, that makes I, me very I happy. I really do, and I happy. and I love the fact um, that they portrayed your wife. Um, she was so so supportive and so um, emotional. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, she's just as invested in your career as 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 you are. Absolutely. I mean, family support is everything. I, I've got to keep her. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, let's talk a little about twenty twenty four. How do you take the next step? How do you get one, two, three spots better? in the championship and, and take home that title? Um, well, the championship, uh, you know, that just comes down to one race. Mm-hmm. So, um, unfortunately, we had a mechanical failure last year that took us out of it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if we can get back to that same spot, that we, if we, we can get back to the championship race, I feel really good about our chances again, um, just like I did last year. So, you know, it starts out this weekend at Daytona for the Daytona 500. And uh, this has kind of been my Achilles heel of the schedule, the super speedway style racing. Okay. And uh, last year I had a great showing and was able to um, finish this race for the first time <laughs> in my career. And I finished it in third position. So that was really good. Uh, and, and, yeah, this is, this is a big one, and I want to win it really bad. We're talking to some of the guys about the luck factor in this race. Does that yes. drive you crazy at a comp- as a competitor? Like there's it's so much so of it. it. It does. It drives me absolutely bonkers that the daytona 500 the the granddaddy of them all in our sport so much luck is involved and and it's it is what it is mm-hmm. you, you got to be lucky he pulled and out good. the it is what it is, it is, what it is. <laughs> there's nothing we can do to yeah. change it you got to be lucky and good that's a, for sure. a line made famous by former carolina yes. panthers head coach <laughs> john fox who used that quite a bit uh over the years um being a part of joe gibbs racing i mean one of nascar's true power teams um what is it like walking in that building knowing that you have all the tools necessary to not only win races but win championships? Um, pressure, for sure. I mean, uh, yeah, you, you don't sit in one of those cars and not, um, and not have pressure and not be expected to perform at the highest level. And if you're not performing at the highest level, then they're going to find someone else who can. <laughs> so, uh, But, you, you know, so my wife did watch the, the documentary <laughs> series, okay? I'm gonna, right. And Joey Logano had the quote of the year, and she told it to me and said it was, like, the best thing ever. Pressure is a privilege. And that is so true, right? Like, pressure is a privilege. You can, I could go live a job where there's no pressure, and guess what? I'm not going to uh, get the, the joys and the rewards of, of what I get to do. So, uh-huh. um, you know, the pressure is you drive for Joe Gibbs races. You're, you're expected to, you know, win races. Mm-hmm. It's a privilege. I'm I, I'm driving for a living legend who has some of the best equipment in the series, and I have the opportunity to win races. So, um, thank you for that, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned it is a privilege. But how's the balance of this? this it's a long season. It's, it's a, a very grind, long season. But yeah. you're doing what you love. This is great. It's a great life. It, it really is. And you know, it. Uh, I've been so fortunate that this has been my career and my job my entire life. So. Uh, you know, I live day to day, and I, I don't go to work. I, I love what I do, and, and this is my life, and uh, it doesn't feel like a job. All right, very good. You know, today is Valentine's Day, so we have we have a few oddball questions or non-racing, well, sort of non-racing-related questions 
Um, JB, the yeah. third, vo- third why, voice why you we, hear. Why don't we start with, yeah, you know what? We're going to go out of order. No, nah, you know, we'll start with the main order. We'll go in the All main right. order. All right. All right, Chris, any snack in the world under caution at the Daytona 500? You can pick anything, like your go-to, I don't know, junk food, you name it, whatever you want. Well, so right now I'm, uh, I'm on this kick of uh, – Animal crackers that are dipped in the Reese's coating. My, let me say my, my oh. shout out to Debbie, my assignment desk manager, oh. who told me the other day, said, JB, you have to have these animal crackers that are dipped in Reese's. Yeah. It'll blow your mind. It's a real yes. thing? It's a real it's thing. It's so good. They you don't, so you good. don't, you can go buy it. You don't make it at home. She right? said, cos- she said oh. Costco. Oh, yeah. they've got okay. a big five gallon barrel or something. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is that what you saw? Because I haven't had it yet. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a bag. I mean, it's a big bag, so you just <laughs> like, you know grab one or two and go about your day. But, All right, very yeah, good. All right, I'm gonna have to look for those. Right. I'm a me, Reese's me guy. Me too. That's yeah. the second person I've heard yeah. talk about it, including NASCAR's Christopher Bell. All right, dream place that you would love to race anywhere in the world. You could build a track anywhere on the planet and race that spot. Where would it be? Wow. Wow, that's a big question. So uh, I'm not much of a world traveler. Okay. I have been to Australia and New Zealand, but that is it um, as far as outside the United States. Uh, so I'm going to say inside the United States. Okay. Uh, honestly, this is uh, pretty far-fetched, but I we've never raced in Denver. So why not Denver? Okay. okay. Denver. Right. Okay. Why, not Denver? why, yeah, wait, why the, Denver? Just because we've never been there. I think uh, it has the opportunity to generate a lot of interest. Um, NASCAR's never been in that area. So they've raced at Pikes Peak, which I think is down the street. But, yeah, have a racetrack in Denver, and uh, okay. I think it would be a success. That would be some, some pretty uh, scenery. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. NASCAR got close executive to over here. That's, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. That's awesome. Last question. You could pick any celebrity, any celebrity in the world now, oh. to have on your team for the Daytona 500 to just be – the, in your corner, your, I your got pre- it. Okay, I got we got it. the okay. motivator right here, yep. buddy. And I'm, I, I swear to you, I didn't have this planned. Obviously, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Coach Prime. Oh, Coach okay. Prime. Okay, all right. Dion. Wow. Yeah. Dion's now Shout the head out. coach at the University the of Colorado. Colorado. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. so that's all right. that's awesome. All right. So what what do you think Coach Prime would say to you? Uh, so. I mean, heck, I don't know. He, uh-huh. I just like seeing his stuff on social media, yeah. right, of him coaching his team. And it's like, yeah. I'm just sitting here watching my phone. I'm ready to go run through a wall yeah. for this guy. <laughs> he's like, he's Coach different. Prime, yeah. send he this is, guy so. some sunglasses, man. Yeah. Send, send oh, him the shades. Right. The that's shades. Right. He's yeah. working it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, that's awesome, man. We appreciate the time. Um, best of luck to you, not only in the Daytona 500, but for the entire 2024 season. Thank you, boys. All All right. See you later. Uh, Chris, great, great okay. pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I'll tell you what, he's with, uh, he's with one of the power teams. There yeah. is no doubt about it. Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, they're a threat every single week in all four of their race cars. you got Martin Truex, you got Ty Gibbs, you got Christopher Bell, and you've got, who am I missing? Danny, Danny Hamlin. Danny, yeah. yeah, yeah. And speaking of Martin <laughs> Truex Jr., the last two years he's had to be asked, is this it for you? And one year was like, it was so bad, I got to come back. And the next year was so good, I got to come back. Right. Um, 43 years old, Martin Truex. Yeah. This could be it, maybe. Yeah. He's one of those guys that are a potential Hall of Fame career yeah. that has not won here in the Daytona 500. Yeah. I mean, you got Kyle Busch. He's another driver who has not won uh, the Daytona 500. Won everything else, but not won yeah. the Daytona 500. So you know these guys really want it. Brad Kozlowski got me fired up. I may have to change my pick for, oh, the, for the winner from okay, Kyle right. Bush to Brad. Brad's fired up about <laughs> this. Right, I, right. Mm. All right, let me give you guys a little history. Man, right, Dan, let, Danny's hot on the bandwagon right, right now. Let me give you guys a little bit of history on my man Danny Harden right here. Every okay, year. All right, it's almost, almost every, every year. year. All right, we do NASCAR shows. We do NASCAR specials, okay, throughout the year. Almost every single show we have a at the end. We have a pick, a pick 'em. Everybody gets a chance to pick who they think's going to win the Daytona 500. And almost every year, my man Danny Harnan goes with Kyle Busch. All right, it is just his go-to guy, and uh, hasn't done it yet. And I've been wrong every year. Yeah, <laughs> maybe this yeah. will be the year. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've. I don't think I've gotten no. any right either. Yeah. Real yeah. quick on Kyle Busch, we are hoping to to get Kyle in the next couple of minutes. If Kyle right. is around, he might be coming our way next, actually. Yeah. Let me show you guys, actually. Yeah, oh, there he is. Yeah. We, we found him. Kind of yeah. like, where's Waldo, but where's yeah. Kyle? There's Kyle. Yeah, he's speaking with the folks at X, NASCAR XM Radio, um, which do a great job covering the sport. I mean, they're there every day, every night. Um, they re- really, really do a good job. Yeah, we don't, want, we don't want to leave without the opportunity to talk to Kyle Busch. I mean, he is uh, – He's a really interesting character. 
um, great, great race car driver, um, you know, and now he's, he's so uh, invested in his uh, son's career. Mm-hmm. Um, he's really, really been fun uh, to follow. Uh, he had a great career at Joe Gibbs Racing. He's now made the transition over to Richard Childress Racing, driver of the number eight car. Uh, his name is Kyle Busch. He's he's getting in the hot seat right now. He knows the routine. Yeah, he knows the routine. Yeah. All right, Kyle, we appreciate the time. Great to see you as always. Um, the quote, 20 years of trying, was used for another RCR driver. I've seen you post that on social media. This is your 20th Daytona 500. I think so, and if I recall is, correctly. Yeah, <laughs> yep, know. yep, yep. Yeah. Um, man, it's the only thing on your resume that's that's not not there yeah um we 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 come i come to this day right here to always deliver this message and talk about how i haven't won the (laughs) i'm sorry i have to start there i know it's not your fault trust me i'm gonna hear it about 50 more times (laughs) as i go down this road right here but um no i'm i'm quite used to it so i think my my explanation is still the same you know until it's done we're gonna we're gonna talk about why it's not you know Uh so um, there's been opportunities, been some really close finishes, some close calls. Um, last year, I won the Daytona 500. It was just under yellow, <laughs> and the race got extended <laughs> into overtime, yeah. and it went to 520 or whatever yeah. it was, you know. So, um, oh, so close. Longest Daytona 500 in history. Yeah. 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 Went 521 miles. We've been miles. talking to a couple of guys about the luck factor in this race. As a competitor, does it drive you crazy in, in a way that there's just so much luck to come out on top here? Yeah, no question. Um, you know, typically when you go to your race weeks, you've got – probably 12, maybe 15 guys that can compete for the win, realistically. But when you come here, it's 30. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's it's about damn near everybody. It's just a matter <laughs> of missing the crashes and being in the right place at the right time and having that opportunity come when it comes down to the end. All right. The thing is, uh, Richard Childress Racing, uh, they have a great history here. Um, and so the confidence level for you, you got you to gotta believe you're going to have a car that has enough speed to run up front and, and win the race. Having that confidence, that's, that's step one along the journey to get to victory lane. No, it certainly is, you know, and, and last year, you know, we came down here with that bounce in our step, and we seemed to prove that, you know, Austin was really good, I was really good. Um, we were running one, two there in those in those mm-hmm. final laps, and uh, so we were really helping each other, having a good dynamic duo there that was uh, pushing each other, and so we'd love to come down here with that same mindset and that opportunity of being able to do that. Uh, a lot of other guys, obviously, every the last 30 guys, I just, t- I just said it, 30 guys <laughs> want to go out there and win this race too, so you know you're going to get be competing against the best of the best in order to try to get that trophy. When you look at your career, the numbers are just mind-blowing. The 229 NASCAR wins over the three series. But the streak that I think is just absolutely amazing yep. is one victory in 19 straight years. That's that's hard. That's yeah. hard to do. Yeah. yeah, at least one, right, yeah. So, um, you know, I remember that stat as a kid when I was growing up. Uh, it was Ricky Rudd, and when he moved from – uh, Hendrick Motorsports to his own team and started his own team in, in the Tide Ride with the 10 car. Mm-hmm. Everybody wondered if he could win in his own stuff, you know, and so they were going through the season and, like, Ricky's competitive and he's leading and then he gets to a race, he's leading, and then I think he won uh, the Brickyard that year. And they were like, yeah, this is 14 or 15 years of, of winning a race in one year. I was like, damn, that's cool. Who's got the most, you know, and looked it up and it's Richard Petty. And it's like, I want to break that one. Year, <laughs> you know? So um, felt good to break it last year. That We were in a tie and then I broke it. Now it would just be really awesome to just kind of keep continuing and adding to that. There's very, very few records that you can have with your yeah. name at the top yeah. and be over Richard Petty. That'd so that's, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you know, the, the strategy that is involved here, you mentioned your teammate Austin Dillon running one, two and pushing each other. Uh, what are those strategy meetings like, you know, preparing for the Daytona 500? Um, it's a lot manufacturer based now, you know, when I was with the Toyota group, we would all, the Toyota drivers would get together. We'd all sit down, we'd all talk. Now it's, you know, the Ford guys do the Ford thing. The Chevy guys do the Chevy thing. So obviously I'm in the Chevy meetings. And so we kind of go through all of that stuff and try to plan and strategize the best we can of how to get a Chevrolet to victory lane. You know, that's the first thing is trying to get our manufacturer to victory lane. They pay us tons of money to be driving their cars. And so, um, that's number one goal. And then number two goal is how do you do it for your team, mm-hmm. RCR, me or Austin? And then number three is how do you get it done for yourself? You know, so um, all those sorts of things just kind of get talked about what the game plan is, what the expectations are. Mm-hmm. You don't really want to leave this race at the end knowing that you screwed your teammate or one of your guys out of the win. Mm-hmm. 
and didn't get it for yourself and open the door for another manufacturer. That mm-hmm. that is like that's dread rule number one. Don't do that. <laughs> At age thirty eight, you still have your A game. In other sports, when people go late in their careers, maybe a pitcher loses miles per hour on his fastball, basketball player not as quick as a NASCAR driver, when do you start to know, oh my gosh, I may not have it anymore? Again, yeah. you're thirty eight, you still got your A game, but it, it, one day it will come. Yeah. I think you just kind of look back on history and look at some of the guys that have retired before us. Um, you know, I look at Kevin. Kevin, I think Kevin was just to the point where he was like, okay, I've had enough. Like, I'm good. I've done everything I need to do, which is fine by him. What was he, 44, 45? Uh, my brother was right around 43, 44. Uh, Mark was probably the longest running guy who he tried to retire at like 45, 46, and then he came yeah. back for a few years, and then he finally was done at 52. Yeah. So I, I think he retired like three times. Probably. You're <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Uh, but you look at like Dale Jarrett, he did the same thing. Rusty Wallace did the same thing. So you're somewhere around the 45 age thing, which, which mm-hmm. I would like to think that I can get that far. And, um, you know, I'm, I got to. What do you lose? I mean, what, what is. I think, lo- I think it's vision. Okay. Your biggest thing is probably vision. The next thing is just probably. In intuition or instinct or quickness, reaction time, that sort of stuff. You know, like John Force, for instance, I don't know how the, how the guy did it, but he was 66 years old, still winning NHRA races, jumping off the line at, mm-hmm. you know, .000 of a reaction time against his competitors. So um, you can still do it at that age. You just got to be <laughs> in it, in it to win it. All right. Uh, y- year number two for you at RCR, how much more comfortable are you there um, – you know, as opposed to last year in year number one? Yeah, uh, definitely more comfortable. You know, d- just having that relationship with the guys, having that relationship uh, with Richard and uh, everybody at the organization, being around them a little bit more, knowing how they work, how I work, how we all click together and, and make the things go. Um, it's been really fun to just kind of be at a new place, you know, and, and be in a new setting with different people and different people that, pull for you, that work for you, that bust their ass for you, and they want to see you go out there and succeed. So that's been uh, the best part that I'm excited about. Again, getting into year number two is having all of that camaraderie and and um, also the notebook too, right? Like we went through the whole first year kind of building on things, although we won more early than we did late. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a lot of different circumstances that answer that question. You don't have enough time today. <laughs> but the biggest thing is like now we can set into year two of like what things worked, what things didn't work, let's throw some of that away. Let's pick up on some of this. Let's let's build this up, make this better for us. So hopefully that will all help us, you know, stay more competitive through the whole year and win some more races. Right, the offseason's not very long. Real quick, what was the best thing you did this offseason? Um, offseason was short, really short. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where time goes, man, but damn. Um, you know, I sold KBM, my truck series team, and so we moved to 77,000 square foot all of our stuff from 77,000 square feet into about 7,000 square feet. So that's a tight fit. My son's racing and building new cars and getting him in the shop and doing some of that stuff was really fun uh, before Christmas. And then we ran uh, the Tulsa shootout over Christmas, New Year break right there. And then he's actually racing over in Ocala this week. So we're doing some of that stuff, which is fun. Um, But I'd say probably um, besides all the family stuff, which is great, Samantha and I, we got a chance to just kind of venture away, get away. We went down to St. Bart's, and okay. we were there for just a long weekend and hung out, found, met some new friends and hung out with them for a little bit and had a good time. So that, yeah. was, that was nice to chill. The islands and the sea, that's, re- yeah. that, that's rejuvenating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trust me, when we're laying out on the beach, we're still into our phone because, you know, there's so many emails and work that's coming uh, in. But you try to put it down. Yeah. All right, very good. Kyle, we appreciate the time. Appreciate yeah. the honesty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, be- best of luck this year. Appreciate that. Good Looking forward to it. All okay. right. Kyle Bush, driver of the number eight car for Richard Childress Racing. And, again, a threat here to win in the Daytona 500, no doubt about that. He's going to win it, and I'm going to be right on my <laughs> <Yeah. pick. laughs> One of these days. Uh, no. If we're here ten years from now, I'm going to get it one year. <laughs> All right. But, boy, what a, what a fun afternoon yeah. that we've had here on the red carpet for the Daytona 500. I mean, we got to talk to, you know, so many of the drivers. I mean, really, you know, the best in the sport. Uh, and, you know, talking to Jimmy Johnson, the Hall of Famer, that was really, really cool. Yeah. I enjoyed I enjoyed that conversation. And what's cool about this is that we get so much better stuff here than we do on the red yeah. carpet there. They, they're really open and honest yeah. with us. Don't be giving away all the secrets yeah. now, man. <laughs> Don't be giving away all the secrets. Uh, and we couldn't do something like this without uh, a, a great crew. JB, as always, uh, 
great job. We appreciate all your efforts. Uh, appreciate you coming up with those uh, yeah. Valentine's Day oh, questions. Oh, man, we're just having some fun. It's yeah. media day, yeah. right? It's a chance for these guys to let loose and yeah. relax a little bit, in addition to, of course, answering the pressure-packed yeah. questions from yes. Kevin Connolly and Danny <laughs> Hardin. Listen to yeah. me. I'm surprised that no driver said, like, an island in the Caribbean to yeah. build a racetrack. Yeah. I mean that's I mean I'd build it in the in the Caribbean yeah, somewhere. A, a lot of American cities. I was I was expecting more Europe, maybe more Asia. You know, give me like yeah. a like a Tokyo or something yeah. crazy like that. But no, uh-huh. the, people are thinking about some places here in the United States that'd be yeah. cool to, I'd to, do to, to a race. Street course race around the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Right. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine making that left turn and, and looking out yeah. the window and be like, oh man, that's the Eiffel Tower yeah. right there. Yeah. That'd be cool. You know, kind of like the end of the Tour de France. Yeah. Where they there you go. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. But right, but boys, good. yeah, absolute absolute pleasure. We had great participation, of course, yeah. with all of our partner stations mm-hmm. across Next Star Nation. Absolute, uh, you know, honor to be able to work with them, and this is fun that we do this every single yeah. year. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, you know, we'll be here um, throughout uh, Speed Week or the rest of Speed Week here at Daytona. And of course, you can tune into your Next Star station, your local Next Star station, for more Daytona 500 content. All right, media, get to work. We've got a lot yeah. of stuff to do before Sunday's five. That includes yeah. all of us here, right? Cutting go. video, yeah, processing right. interviews, transcribing sound, all yeah. of it. Yeah. Any final words, Kevin, Danny? It's it's been a pleasure once again. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Um, any Sunday's, picks? Uh, any picks? Well, he's already he's on the hook for. Kyle Kyle or Brad Kozlowski. (laughs) I'll narrow it down by Sunday. (laughs) I do like the I do like the Brad Kozlowski pick. I really do. Um, That would be a heck of a story. You know what? I'm gonna gonna go Blaney again. No, 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 no. (laughs) I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make a pick per se, but I'm gonna say what would be an absolute great story: Hall of Famer Jimmy Johnson. Mm winning the Daytona 500 storybook yeah. that yes. would be yeah. an unbelievable story and yeah. we certainly would be here to to tell it yeah. uh for Danny Harden for JB for Chris Weaver for all of our friends at uh Next Star man we appreciate all the time that you've spent with us this afternoon it's really been a pleasure uh let's go racing boys all right let's do it all right have a great afternoon everybody